Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. Welcome to All Horse Racing All the Time. I'm your host, Al. Today, big day, a big day of racing at Gulfstream Park. I've been through this card. We're going to be covering every single race as the card unfolds here on this show. Open chat. I'll be giving you my key contenders, analysis, uh, selections in place for every single race. Starting now, you know, first race is at 12, 10 p.m. Eastern time. and It'll work our way through the card. And the last race goes off just after 4 p.m. And we'll be here for all of them, as usual, with our daily show. <sighs> Been through the card. Yeah. Been through the card, of course. I usually go through the card very early in the morning. And then I made some adjustments with scratches. Thankfully, not too many scratches today. So weekend's almost here, folks. Happy Thursday. Yeah, you can kind of see it on the horizon out there. We're getting there. So that's good news. We have the Rebel Stakes, Giant Stakes races on Saturday at Oakland Park. So we'll be covering Oakland Park on Saturday for the Rebel Stakes, a big Kentucky Derby uh, prep race, G1 race. We also have a G3 race on that card and other stakes. So three stakes races out of the 12 including the Rebel Stakes that has a full field and a lot of entry. Yeah. Again, Cox has multiple entries in there. It's, it's going to be one of those races. So it looks to be a good one. A lot of points awarded. First two finishers. Obviously, you're going to qualify for the Kentucky Derby. What about today's card? Well, I looked at the scratches. Did they affect did they affect me? There was um, actually the one I like best in the third race was scratched, and that scratch was number six, Cactus Jack, but that's a wide open race. <laughs> that's a wide open race. It, you know, it was a slight one. I kind of I kind of was leaning that way, but I was looking at others as well. So that's no great shakes. This race, uh, a scratch of number in race number two, raising the glass. I didn't like that one to begin with. And uh, the three and the 12 in race eight, I didn't see them affecting the race at all. Number three was a 31 shot free soul who I didn't think had a, sh a chance. And the number 12, same thing goes for number 12, who was scratched. A 21 shot opening odds, English Bob. Uh, a little recap on yesterday's races. And I see uh, Boris is in the house. Hey, Boris, more good morning to you, coach. Al, good luck today. Um, good luck today and everyone else betting. Let's have a winning day. Yeah, let's get it done today, Boris. And yeah, I'm going to touch a little bit on yesterday. And I think, and I'm sure you, you have opinions about this as well. Uh, the writing of, of Irod Ortiz in some races. All right. He turned out to be on, in every single race on the card. He was in all nine races, right? Irod Ortiz. And he did win two of them. He won two of them on races really that were, he was on big favorites in both races. One of them that he won, of course, went off at 1.1 to 1, just about, just a fraction above even money. And the other one was a, a 1.9 to 1, under 2 to 1 shot. So he won two out of nine. But the interesting part was some of the races there, he drew the ire of the viewers and the betting public and uh, by losing on some favorites that looked like they were going to be big win contenders. And they turned out to be money burners in those races. So he was in nine races and he did win two, but two races that he was pretty much expected to win. And I mentioned Boris here. Who's weighing in? Good luck today, Boris. Good to see you. I mentioned Boris here because it appeared to be, along with myself, now I won this race as well, uh, Boris was another one who were the beneficiary of, of a race that looked like Irod had won and our horse came out of the clouds despite a, maybe it was, uh, it was one race. It looked like Irod had it won, and we, and we turned around and we got the race won. And a lot of people watching were screaming bloody murder. They said it appeared that um, 
I ride was 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 peeking over his shoulder, waiting for the other one to come, or and and holding the horse back a little bit. He gets nailed at at, at the wire. And uh, so, what's the story with Irod Ortiz? And, and this can go for any jockey as well at other tracks, because no matter what track you watch, if you're a horse racing fan or a horse player, like if you watch any track on a consistent basis, you're going to see what looks like suspicious looking finishes. What are you going to do? It, it, it's a, It's part of the game. And I guess it's part of the fun of the game and the lore of the game. Uh, when there's money involved, you're always going to have uh, an opinion, especially if you lose a race. But in Boris and myself, in my case, uh, we took our, <clears throat> we I, I wouldn't go as far as to say humbly, but we accepted that we won the race and we won our plays. But maybe perhaps, maybe there was a smidgen of a chance that there was some um, we were beneficiaries of what looked like a questionable ride. So how do you address something like that? You know, well, for starters, I, I believe I'm, I, when I'm a beneficiary of what looks like a lucky break or something that went on on the track, a bad ride or a trip or a suspicious looking ride, I, I'll be the first one. I'm a straight shooter. I'll be the first one to call it out and say, hey, it looks like I caught a break there. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I had this all the way. This one, of course, yeah, I knew it was going to win. But you know, yesterday we were like, hey, you know, I, I don't know if, if either Boris or myself, uh, if it passed, it cost to our minds of probably saying, okay, we caught a break here. Maybe we really didn't deserve to win this race. Maybe one we want to think about maybe sending the money back that we won, either, uh, you know, send it to Gulfstream Park, donate it to Gulfstream Park and have them, uh, you know, uh, distribute the funds, maybe do a ch favorite charity or something as they see fit. Because uh, deep down, maybe we really didn't deserve to win that money. You know, uh, who would we, or do we donate it to, send that money back, uh, send it to maybe the backstretch crew donation? I well, certainly wouldn't send it to the jockey funds as a donation. But would we give our, you know, did it cross our mind, give the money back? You know, we talked about it a little bit. We touched on that. Yeah, maybe we should donate this money. But, uh, you know, when the smoke cleared and the ashes, you know, we're out and you know we decided hey sometimes we catch a bad break and we lose money that way so we decided not to donate the money or give it back so but yeah that's part of horse racing sometimes it's uh, sometimes you get suspicious finishes and some and now those uh i rod or tease you know put a lot of flack yesterday for uh losing on a lot of horses that looked like they were big favorites all right, you know, hey, did they call a piece on them or your FBI after some of these rides? Well, let's put it this way. I ride Ortiz, a very high winning percentage, 27% jock, but something some, at Gulfstream anyway. Something to keep in mind is he wins 27%, and that means he loses 73% of the time. So as good as he is, and that goes for the trainers as well, they – they lose more than they win. So cut them a break a bit. And from what I saw, I played against him and beat and, and won playing against him on some of these favorites. Because truth be told, I look over the card very closely. I saw that he was an undeserving favorite on some of those plays. He, I didn't see him as a slam dunk at all. So it really didn't come. It really, even though we wound up favored, it, I saw him as a vulnerable favorite. I saw he was riding a vulnerable favorite. But there were a couple of races uh, where I, his the ride or the pace, whatever, uh, were a question mark. Maybe some people were wondering, well, why did he start off all the way in the back on a horse that had speed? Or, why, you know, why? how did he blow a lead deep in the stretch like that when it looked like the race was almost won and the, the finish line was just in front of him? And he seemed to even peek over his shoulder for a second, like, where is this? Where is he? Is he coming yet? You know, it was a race with... I think he was on the four and the two nailed him at the wire. But yeah, most play, most horses, they, they lose most of the time. Who else is here? Uh, Armando. Hey, Armando Ramirez. Good to see you. Good luck today. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard everybody who's watching. 
And the same thing goes for the trainers. Some, and there's some trainers to keep in mind today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the trainers for a second. I touched on the scratches. But what I do want to bring up here, I see Irene is here before I go there. Irene hit a tremendous, uh, what was it, a pick four to close out the day on the seven? That was the one. I called the seven there. I like that one best. But Irene closed out the day with a pick four, beautiful pick four, not one of these chalky ones. And <clears throat> great job, Irene. What do you got? Keep the money, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. We I think we decided unless Boris changed his mind. Boris, did you send the winnings over to the track? I don't know. I know I decided to keep the money, so I, I am not going to speak. Attempt to speak for Boris. I, I, unless I heard Boris was keeping the money, he was not going to donate it or give it back. This is not like someone making an error in your favor. If there was funny business going on. It was intentional. That's not your problem. Yeah, and we get sometimes we're on the short end of the stick that time. So I decided for one to keep the money. Great job, Irene, on that pick four uh, yesterday at Gulfstream. Uh, who else? Hey, hey, Paula, where are you? Yes. Hey, hey, Paula, where are you? That two and that two got stuck in the gate too. I thought it was finished. He had it. Yeah, that's the one, Boris. We're coming, all right. Uh, good morning, Amadeo. How's it going, Amadeo? Good to see you today. Happy Thursday, my friend Al, and great day, everyone. Good luck today, Amadeo. Interesting card. Uh, Coach Al, I'm willing to send it to the track for someone to slam dunk I ride in the face. Well, that's probably how a lot of people felt yesterday. He was on, again, for those just joining the show, he was on nine horses yesterday, and he won on two Pretty much on two heavy chalks, one 1.1 to one and another 1.9 to one that looked virtually unbeatable. He was so he's two for nine yesterday, but he was on a lot of on other favorites that had people scratching their heads. Not just that he lost, but the way he lost those races. I just want to bring up the trainers for a second. Uh, and I'm going to mention this. You may want to take out your pen for this. We all know Pletcher is leading. These are current stats as of today. He's leading the He's leading the way now. He sees a uh, shot past Safi Joseph Jr., both in winning percentage and in wins. Just some of the other trainers I want, I would like to bring to your attention. Uh, the ones to keep an eye on now. I wrote them down so I could look for these guys as they go off. And one of them is Bill Mott. And Bill Mott is, is the trainer of the seven uh, since that's the first race. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen the board yet. I guess the board hasn't opened yet. But the seven opens, I believe, at nine to two. And uh, let me just bring this in. Leipzig opens at five to one. Yeah, now he's six to one. And I think that one's very dangerous. It has a concealed trip. It's the one I like best in a wide open race. One to certainly use with the others. And uh, William Mott is the trainer of this seven. But the reason I'm talking about Mott is he is one of these trainers yeah, Pletcher and Joseph Jr., they're the leaders in wins, but there are others that are, have superior winning percentage. And William Mott, the sixth leading trainer, is one of them. He has 11 wins in 51 races, so he's well over 20%, uh, William Mott. And now he's he's the trainer with uh, Alvarado up of this seven in the first race. But there are others to keep in mind. The high percentage, uh, they when they send them out there, they're ready to go. Look at Brian Lynch, of the of uh, he's ranked sixth, seventh, ten wins out of thirty-two starts. He's winning over thirty. He's winning over thirty percent of his races, and he also has six seconds and six thirds. So keep an eye on these trainers. Go to Equibase, uh, leading trainers for, uh, or put the track name first. Gulfstream leading trainers or. You know, uh, Aqueduct leading trainers, whatever track you're playing, San Anita leading trainers. And they'll give you this list, and you can see who's the hot ones and who who aren't. The same goes for the jockeys. And the other trainer to keep an eye on, I wrote these down, Christophe Clement. He has eight winners out of 30 starts. And 23 out of 30 in the money, eight out of 30, he's winning just under 30% here, and he's always in the money. You notice he doesn't have 115 starts like like Pletcher does. Clement has 30, but look at it. Look at look at how he's winning here. Eight wins out of 30 tries. The other one is David. Uh, David. Um, 
Carlos. Let me just Carlos David. Carlos David, look at this guy. Five, seven wins out of 35. So he's he's hitting 20%. And Sandino, the other trainer to look for, six winners out of 16 starts. Sandino Hernandez Jr. winning 30, almost 38%. Yeah. So keep an eye on those trainers. I'm not going to, and you can do the same thing for the jockeys. I'm not going to look at the jockeys right now. It's the same crew that's leading over there in the jockey colony. Irod Ortiz, Saez, followed by Jose Ortiz, and then we slip down to the Tyler Gaffleones, et cetera. The jockeys, there are some that are cold, but there are others to keep an eye on. Who else? Who's here? We're going to start talking about this race coming up. Joe, Joe Esso, good morning out. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you today. Let's get it done today. And Joshua, let's get it done out. Good luck, Joe. Good Joshua, let's get it done. Joshua Willis is in the house. Boris the Blade. Uh, ha ha, I made back. I ride in the opener today on the nine horse. That's the thing. I think the nine is a little scary in that race, Boris, with the Chad Brown. You know, what do you do? Is it taking money right now? Let's take a look at Chad. Open seven to two, currently four to one. That's, I have five horses listed as contenders, and seven is the one I'm really looking at. And seven is uh, open five to one, currently five to one. I'm just going to see what kind of numbers. I'm going to take a peek at what seven is, what horse is taking the most money in the doubles right now. It's all going through three and seven, folks. Those three, seven, and nine a little bit. Three, seven, and nine are the ones taking the money in the doubles. Depending on, on uh, yeah, three, seven, and nine, as far as the pools go. If what do you mean? I don't know if I'd make three, eight to five. I mean, it's a nice horse. I mean, it's all right. It's You got the trainer factor, but he's faster than the seven. All right. We'll look at those in a second. Uh, Freaky Frank Booth. Hey, fr hey, Frank, how's it going? Good to see you. Good luck today. Make, ready to make money today? Baby needs new shoes. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. All right. Some other jockeys. Keep in mind. Some may be wondering or some may be pleased. They're like, oh, where's Chantel uh, Sutherland? We didn't see her yesterday. Or maybe you're just relieved. Oh, thank heavens I don't have to handicap who she's riding this race. Well, Chantel seems to be taking a bit of a break. She's not scheduled to ride again anywhere until March 1st. Maybe she's taking the end of the February off. Is she contemplating retirement? Now, I know I joke sometimes. Uh, and say, yeah, you know, after a bad race, maybe horse, uh, the jockey may consider retiring, especially if it's an older jock. But Chantel has been ice cold, and maybe she just needs a break. I don't think she's considering retirement because she is slated to run again on March 1st and not here. I, I believe it's a Tampa. I have to check. She's not, Chantel is not scheduled to race again until March 1st. What about Emma J, Jane Wilson? And now the, both of these, Emma Jane and Chantel, has, have experienced success before, but they're ice cold now. And Emma Jane is scheduled to ride four out of nine today. So we're going to be seeing a lot of Emma Jane, Wilson, including the one in the first race. And that raises a quandary for me because that's one. It's a typical course that we used to save ground inside and... If it can take, if it can stretch out, if it can handle the stretch out, should be a contender. But now you got Emma Jane up, who, who can't hit the side of a barn as, as far as nailing down a win goes here at this place. If it was another jockey riding it, if it was, say, one of the Ortiz brothers or even uh, Saez or, or decent jock, I might be more inclined to play it. Now I'm almost inclined to make it an automatic toss. Actually, I have the one with the question. I don't even have the one listed at all. I'm not, I'm not, I was considering it, and now I'm not, I don't have it at all. Mo tough, yeah. But it, it, I may bring it back into play. Okay, who else? 
Uh, I got Emma Jane on Coach Abernathy. I'm not, is that the sprint race? I'm, uh, which race is that, Frank? I got numbers here. Of course, I'll be talking about horses' names as we look at it. Now it's time to start talking about the first race. Emma Jane on the first race, uh, Mo Tough is open nine to two, is five to one. This is kind of a wide open race I, for longer ones. Let's take a look at it. I'm on number seven. Race number one. Let's get this out of here. And let's talk about the first race. First race is on turf. Mile and a 16th on, on mile and a 16th on turf. Maiden optional claim 50K for maiden fillies, three-year-olds and Florida bred or maiden claiming price 50K. I landed on number seven. Uh, let's just see. So we got a maiden race here. And it plays almost like an allowance race. Any of these in for tag. Number two is in for tag. What's good? I don't have that one. Who else? Uh, number three is in for a tag. Interesting. Now it looks like they're well. Uh, three is in for a tag. And it has speed, early, early speed or so they say. If one runs like it did before, and now the one comes off to Peters, Emma Jane Wilson did ride this one to a second place finish where it closed well. And it, it looks like it has closing ability and it's out of, has Uncle Mo on the, on the sire side to back. This is actually a player because I don't think three is going to grab the lead from this one. I really don't. Now, it's coming from Woodbine, and that's where Emma Jane rode this. She's had her, you know, her success at Woodbine, and the type of horses that are winning this race the most, the no real dominant type is winning, just like no real rail position is winning. Although the rail out of 47 races is winning 13% of this type of contest. And... This horse that Emma Jane is riding is a presser who has been winning the most of these races, believe it or not. It's not the early speed. The late pressers are winning 28%. And I, the thing that gets me, though, is she might find herself on the lead here, and I might have to use Emma Jane Wilson, which really opens the race up wide with six that I'm looking at, and the field's not even that big. And I even have six as one of the ones to keep an eye on, who's now 36 to one. We'll take a look at this just a little closer. I expect one and three, of course, to be towards the front. I think the four could be forwardly placed in this. And I think the four with Miguel uh, Vasquez, no wants to be for me, could actually find itself on the lead in this. So one, three, and four are the speeds, although none of them really, three is the only one that is more inclined to go towards the front based on its recent running style, and it's in for that tag. Coffee, we're not drinking $100 coffee or $50 coffee today. Maxwell House, good to the last drop. It is good. It's good. It's getting the job done. Now we're going to drop it back a little bit here and, and take a closer look. Let's look at some of these trainers who might get it done. Do we have any of those sneaky trainers in here that I've talked about earlier? Well, we do have Bill Mott on the seven, who I mentioned. Uh, Leipzig, who I think is the one to beat in here. And it's about five to one on the boards. At least use it in your exotics somewhere it, it, for an exacta play. Somewhere in that range, you're getting a price here. This one ran, uh, was running off the pace. Uh, it was at one point six in the sixth path into the stretch. It was running too wide uh, a couple of times in the race. So it lost some ground. And it's making its second turf start. So I'm looking for some improvement on the turf. And already, last race is good enough if they straighten it out. Junior Alvarado is up, and he teams with Mott Williams. He's one of those hot trainers I told you about. He's actually the leading trainer 
here money-wise at this meet, even though he doesn't have too many starts, thanks to Pegasus' uh, World Cup win. But he's winning over 20%, and he's and he's here right now. Together with Junior Alvarado, he's 18%. Out of Mendelssohn, the sire. But how does this one figure as far as the pace goes? He has enough pace to be hanging around. He'll be he'll probably be tracking and uh, taking a shot at them from the outside. Now, the other one I'm looking at is number four. So I like this. I, th I think the seven has saved ground. I'm looking for improvement second time out. Uh, did it work out before recently? It does have a workout. 53rd out of 117 on February 18th. So, yeah, he's getting ready. Had a workout on February 11th. Had a workout on February 4th. Look at it. He's been working out. He's worked out three times since his race on January 22nd. So Mott Williams has this one looking like he's ready to roll. And Mott Williams, second time Lasix, wins 24%. And that's out of 104 races, 106 races. Wouldn't surprise me if this one winds up being, uh, if not the favorite, the second choice by the time we open. We're at five to one. Hopefully we get close to that uh, with this one. We still have 14 minutes to post. And uh, who else got here? Uh, two usual long time. Okay, Frank. You, okay, uh, I got now. Dude, on top with two usual long shot. Good luck, Frank. Thanks for sharing those. I noticed the rail on torpedo is fast, probably because it's not all soft inside like the dirt. Yeah, the torpedo can be tricky in some sprint races. It's it's useless, but that seems to be evening and evening out a little bit. Maybe they're taking better care of the torpedo. We're getting more familiar with as as, as the meat unfolds. And uh, Verdeen, how's it going, Ver Frederick? Good, <coughs> good morning, Coach. Hope we can get the early double. <coughs> the hard part's going to be the first one, Verdeen. And I'm talking about it now. I like seven best, and I'm working my way through some of these. Good luck today, Verdeen. A pleasure. A pleasure as always. I think I like what I'm seeing. It's a competitive card. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna candy coat anything. It is a competitive card. There are very, some very trick, tricky races. And I mentioned this before. Uh, Emma Jane Wilson is in four of them, including the first race today. And no Chantel Sutherland. She's off until March 1st. She's not scheduled to race. She's taking a little time off. Let's see. We have another pick here. Uh, Joe, uh, box three with one, two, four, five, seven. All right. I'm telling you, this first race is wide open. Wide open. The other one I'm looking at is four. I like the race. Four has every right to beat the three. And I know a lot of people are taking the three because of the trainer, Safi Joseph Jr. But the four is just, the three, four is just as fast. And you know what? It even can show as much speed as the three if it has to, because it has. It's a virtual coin flip between these two. The one thing is the you got the high percentage trainer of the three. That's that's the whole thing. Riding four is let's talk four while I'm on four. I have three with a question mark next to it at the end. So that tells me that I really got to take a cl closer look, check the board because I think it's vulnerable as it is, especially to that seven. But this four. Doesn't have the training horsepower, has Cam Cambolati. Cam Cambolati is the trainer who is 10% here at Gulfstream and 11% overall, covering 480 plus starts. Does get team with um, Miguel uh, Velasquez. Together, they're 11%, but they have a very solid ROI. They snuck some bomb in there. A 344, 3.44 ROI. But more so than the trainer and the jockey, I am looking at the horse or the filly, to be more specific. No wasabi for me. I, I think she's she is a live one. Uh, the three does have more class, and it has thrown races uh, fast enough before to win, and maybe today's the day. It seems to have mu has multiple races.
fast enough to win or at least come in second. So I would give the three an edge over the four when push comes to shove just because of the connections, and it's more inclined to go to the front. The other one I looked at is the six. Kitten Zen. For all you kitten horse play lovers out there, gray horse players, kitten horse players. Now, if it can take that last race on the tapita, it's getting faster every race. It's turf race two back. Uh, got stuck running wide. Needs to improve a little bit, but not greatly. And that tapita race which was wide. If they can straighten this out, they have Jorge Ruiz up. Low percentage jock, 6%. 50% overall, though. And the trainer is Luis Duco, who is 9% here at Gulf Stream, and that covers over 1,500 races. Okay, but the trainer with this uh, Duca and Ruiz together at 13%, but I think this six is a live one, and I'm going to put under there. I don't think it's going to win. If it runs that torpedo race it, that it did last time, I mean, it's not a kitten's joy. All right? And that's another one that should be, it has enough pace, really, that it shouldn't be way out of it. I like it underneath. You want to mess around with the shoulders? Uh, that's probably the one. What are the odds on six right now? 32 to one. How is that possible? Now, my seven is bet down to 92. And the only other ones I'm going to talk about is nine. I really don't know what to make of it. It's the Chad Brown entry. I see Brian Madu, one of the analysts at Gulfstream, does like my seven best, followed by the four, followed by the one. And Ron Blady, uh, the big man on campus over there, that as far as the analysts go, he's the headline guy. Uh, he usually likes to eat chalk, Ron. And he's eating a Again, with number three, R rows all day. So he likes three best, followed by the five, who I don't even have listed it at all. But you, aha, uh -huh. uh, Frank is is on that. Somebody's on that five, not do not dead. Going to have to close into it. The five. Now let me tell you about it that little bit. That's another one. The five is no faster than the six, folks. Actually, I think the six, uh, the six has been in the right way. Five is making its second turf start. And uh, had some trouble last time. It's going to have to work out a trip uh, because it really doesn't have much speed. Has uh, the trainer Falcone 13% together. He's only had Jose. He has Jose Ortiz, the bad Ortiz, if you want to call him, or the weaker Ortiz. Together, they're 17%, one for six. I think the six is, is just as fast, if not faster, than the seven. And you're getting a, a five, and you're getting a big price. Okay, let's open it up. What do you got here? Uh, good morning. Four last time out ran against winners. All right, Frank. Hey, good good luck today, Frank. Thanks for sharing that with us. Let's get it done. Three looks best on Frank. Three looks best on paper. Six and eight don't look that bad as long shots. Yeah, six doesn't look, six doesn't look bad at all. And I'll even go a step further. If six takes that last race and translates it over to turf and keeps getting better like it has been, six is going to wind up in the winner's circle. That, yeah, it, it is not an impossibility. But in the front end, I don't, do I think it's going to happen? I, I don't think so. I, I don't know. I think this is wide open. If they are going to put a probe on here, fast one here, it's six. Uh, let's see, exact the three over four, five. Thomas, good luck, Thomas. You're on the chalk. Three on the six. Tony, uh, three, everybody's eating, loving, going after the chalk here. What do you like about the three? Let me know. Okay. Um, and now some of you double players, what about the second race? Now the second race, we have four scratch. So we're going to try and use second race. It's a mile on dirt. It's another race. that's freaking crazy.
one five seven maybe. At least one can get the dirt. It's run on dirt. We got some of these tapita entries in here. And the seven looks pretty solid. I mean, I'm trying to the one five seven. I it's, it's a tough race. What are the odds on these? If you had to pick one, I guess you'd pick the one because at least it has some races on dirt. You know, it can get the mile. As far as speed goes, next race pays for you double players. I, I gotta think one is gonna run off and freaking hide. What are the odds? Double odds. One has the big speed edge. Actually, two is taking some money here. Two, one, and two are taking the money. What about two? Jaramillo on the two. Uh, Kako. All right. Yeah, there is it. Let me just look at that two a second. Yeah, actually, I would. Actually, two is the one that I. Okay, two. Definitely one, two. I think one, two get it done. If you want to add a third. We'll work off those two. I think one, two is your, your play in the double with, with some of these for you, Daily Double fans. That may be the way I go. Just use in this race. I think the one is a contender. I know it's Emma Jane Wilson. If she's going to get it done, I hate to say this, but I I think that one is 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 live. And Brown's in there. Do I take who do I take a shot shot on here? I'll just take seven. Seven with um Seven to get in there. Let me look at the pools. Maybe seven with one, two. But this is a hard race just to pick the winner. I'm looking at the pools. Three is taking a lot in the place pool, followed by nine. See, we've got a dangerous race here. It all, it all goes through three, seven, and nine. So what I'll do is this. I'm not going to pick a, an exacta here. We're going to go a double seven with one, two. I'll just stick with my horse and, and, and get this done. Race, race one. Daily double. Seven. Seven with one, two, seven, folks. Seven with one, two, seven. That's my double. Let me enter it. Wide open race. Wide open race. Seven right now is four to one. Okay, Blue Smoker. Okay, on looks for seven is okay. All right, good luck, Blue, Blue Smoker H1. Good to see you. All right, so I'm on the crook. I ride. Win on number nine. Okay. Good luck, Boris. All right, wow. Well, what are the odds on four? Four is definitely a player. In 11 to one? I'll tell you what, that four is just as good as the three. But the three has the better connections. I mean, I got the trainer, got a much better trainer. And you know who the other one? One. I think one can sneak on the button. I, uh, I'm just going to talk. I, this is so wide open. 
How wide open is it? There are nine ends in this race, and I've talked about six of them being contenders. The seven I like best, and the other ones, one, three, four, six, and nine. That's how wide open it, I see it. Who are the ones that, that could make some noise uh, at a longer price? If, if you're going to box one of them in exactas, you will play a few exacta boxes and use one of them. I'd use seven. Box them with a few others. I'd box them with one, uh, three, four. How far are you going to go with this, right? Nine is now taking a lot of money. Chad Brown won this first-time starter. How do you know what this horse is going to deliver? Let's talk about Chad as the first time uh, with his first-time starters. I like to give you some money uh, things here. He wins first time out on turf 20, 25% of the time. And when he has horses that are less, four to one or less, he wins 32% of those. So that's about a third, but it also means he loses 68% of these. And he's going up against some – are they world beaters? Well, they, they have some consistent ones. He has I rod up. Uh, Brown and I rod together are 26%. Interesting. I know Brown goes to Castellano a lot. Why is he going to Irod here? Maybe just to be – I mean, he's ensured he's going to take the most money with Brown and Irod. I don't like it at 2-1. to one. I, I'd i like 4-1 uh, or better on this nine. Just don't know. And there are others in here. This You want to, you know, a long shot that has a shot to hit the board, six, 40 to one. Let's put in a show bet on the six. All right. We also bet six to show. What the hell, right? I know it's a late call. Also number six to show. It's in. I know it came late. I, I did what I could there. With I, I just saw the odds were still 38 to 1. It surprised the hell out of me. Uh, Emma Jane Wilson, very good job. She drives and hits better than a man. She's had her success, yeah, and I'm surprised she's not going to the front here. Good luck, Amadeo. Uh, who else? Right. Nine. Richard is a 240k Harris horse in for a 50k tag. Wow, that is a red flag, Richard. I think that's very interesting. Botic, 1970. Wow, three years since Chad Brown has won at Gulfstream on the top. That's yeah. You can't be that. You're kidding, Botic. Let's see who else. Seal. Hey, Seal, how's it going? Two leading the way. I expect seven to win here. I'm looking for six to hit the board as a show player. Uh, nine is a black horse. Looks pretty good. Who else? Uh, good luck there. Uh, Seal, good luck. Chad's horse had a ton of back work. Seal, good luck, Seal. Oh, three years to the date? I can't see that. Is it? Oh. Bought it three years to the day. What rates? Verdine, four dollar double, one seven, one two seven. I thought one is live here, and uh, here comes the four. Uh, we got others running here. Where's seven, folks? Where is seven? He's splitting horses. No, that's the one splitting horses. We're not even going to get in this, folks. Seven is there. Jeez. All right. What are you going to do? Body. Which horse is this are you talking about? Three years to the date for Chad Brown. Let's see. Verdine. Uh, Four dollar double, one seven, one two seven. How'd the one finish up there? I didn't have the two at all, folks. Where's the seven? Did he even show? 
It's not going to show either. Okay. First time. Okay. I see what you mean, Bodic. Uh, first time starter in three years. Got it. Got it. I'm with you. Okay. First time starter in time in three years. Yeah, his firsters aren't getting it done here on turf. Okay. Who else? Let's see our winners here. Yeah, Bardic, great call on that. I see what you mean now. You're talking about he hasn't won this with a first-time starter. A first-time starter. He's won on turf otherwise, but he with a first-time starter, hasn't done it. One more seventh. You know, Seal, Emma Jane Wilson, this time she was on one that didn't, actually was a contender and did nothing. She showed no pace. She didn't send the horse at all or the filly at all. And at this point, then she's due to ride in three more races today. Thank heavens I didn't play, bet anything on her. I could take my loss there with the seven. That's fine. I could take my loss with the six to show. That's fine. But what I would have been able to take was playing that one horse and losing. That, that would have been bad on my part. A weak ride on the seven. Agreed, Blue Smoker. I, I don't know what the hell happened there. Let's take a look at that, too. It improved. What, what can I say about it? Maiden claim. Edgar Perez riding it. 14% jock. Quint, uh, Ken Sweezy. Others were faster. I If this one beats me, it beats me. You know, I'm, I never would have had that underneath. Thank heavens I didn't spread in an exact to play box and seven with a few of them. Because that, then that would have really irked me. I, I'm better I'm disappointed in that race. I had it with three others, the one, two, and the seven and the double. I think one is going to run away. I think maybe one run away. I can't see it finishing worse than second. Okay, let's go back and see who we have. Verdine, 1 7 with. I'm still thinking about the seven. That's the problem there. Uh, who else has? Who, who has these winners here? All right, you're alive in the double uh, with the three seal. Two. I, I wouldn't have used the two either there, seal. I think you made the right move. I, I never would have used the two. What were the odds on the two? 19 to 1. I think a lot of people had this. I'll tell you how many people had this. About one out of every 51, <laughs> at least by the odds. You know, I'm sure some had it, you know, multiple times, but you know what I mean. Who else? There's my there's I did one seven oh seven just mystifying ride. And uh Kelvin, Kelvin, how's it going? Good luck today. Got it done. Nice job. You're live with three of them there next grace. Go get them. Thanks for joining us. Good luck today. Uh who else? Amadeo delivers one three seven over one two. Tremendous exact Amadeo. Excellent. Verdane, you know, she had every, something telling me that they set this up for Emma Jane if the horse takes the turf. Exactly. This was the one to beat if you consider the way it ran the two races on the tapita and got the rail. And I tend to think that the horse would have taken uh, this Philly would have taken to turf if not for the jockey. That's a shameful ride on her part. Uh, win place, three win place, daily double, I, one and two.
those are the two main ones to beat there. Maybe the seven a little bit if those two don't get it done. But yeah, I think one and two, you got you're gonna get this double and great job on the win place on the three. And three, Frank, it does look best on paper. Hopefully you had something that Kelvin, Chantel is in Dubai. What is she doing in Dubai, uh, Kelvin? That's that's interesting. Usually the good jockeys go over there. Let's check that out. I, uh, let me just follow up on this story. That I find that amazing. I, I gather you're correct if you're saying it here. Thanks for the update. Let's see. I don't see her anywhere. You're kidding, I, I think, right? I don't know if you if you have a if you have a, a link to this, uh, please share it with us because I would find that staggering, uh, Kelvin. Okay, who else? Um, I think the winners covered here. The two made it tough. Anarag is here. You just take a shot in dark coach. You like the rest of us. I just went with the one I like best. I, I, a real shot in the dark. I would have been boxing four horses here and I was still would have been, I went with the one I like best and went with, um, with a daily double. And that's it. I was just mystified by this field. There was, yeah, this was a shot in the dark. I think anyone who, um, who did that, who, let's see, anyone who, yeah, I have six of them listed here. This, this was a tough race to really have a handle on. I, if somebody did, you know, congratulations, hats off. Kelvin, check her Twitter page. Okay, I'm, I'll check her Twitter page, Kelvin. Let's see what's up with Chantel. All right. Is she there as a tour or is it actually riding? I, you know, in Dubai, sometimes they stick a horse in there that really isn't competitive to make waves or, you know, like Rich Strike is scheduled to run in the Dubai World Cup. And they say, we're Rich Strike running against the horses in the Dubai World Cup is going to get smoked. But sometimes they like to get the media attention. For example, say your Rich Strike is in here. The Kentucky Derby winner from America is in the uh, Dubai World Cup. And they put put that one out there just to make some headlines. Kentucky Derby winner, right? Uh, Chantel, how do you even say her name? Sutherland? I know how to spell the last name. I don't even see her. I don't see, I don't see it. I, I don't see she has a Twitter page, but I'll give one quick look, but otherwise, please send over the link to that page or include it in your thing here. All right, I found her. Okay, she's a... Oh, brother. Is she actually riding in this? I, I find that absolutely staggering that they would want her on any of these mounts. Okay. She is there. And thanks to Ken. Kelvin, thank you very much for the update. Your man on the spot. And here is a link for those of you who want the latest on Chantel Sutherland, why she isn't here. And thanks, special thanks to Kelvin Johnson. I'll tell you, we have some very knowledgeable and informed uh, players here joining us on the show. And thanks, Kel Kelvin. And there's the link. You want to read up? Thank Kelvin for this. 
uh, he gave us the in, in, the information. So there we go. Yeah, for the Saudi Cup, Richard. Yeah, I was thinking about doing some coverage for that, but we was... <laughs> on to race two. All right. No Chantel. I'm glad she's over there. Let her have fun. And hopefully, and this, this, you know, this way when she's on horses that, that figure to do something and they don't, we don't lose money. <laughs> okay. She's had her moments. Who else? I got a vacation. Frank, check my pics. I got it. I scrolled back. I didn't see it, but I believe you, Frank. I got a million messages here, but I get to as many as I can. If I didn't get there, I am doing my best. And great job. Great job, Frank. Keep it going. Thanks for joining us today. Who else? All right, let's go. Let's move on. Let's go to race number two. One mile. We do have a scratch number four. One mile, I, I think one, one is going to take all the money here. One mile, claim 6250, purse 19,000 for Phillies and Mares, four years old and upwards, which have never won three races. One mile. Now, the thing about the one is it does have the big pace edge, but can it get the mile? It's been sprinting. Science is not riding it. Who's been winning this type of race? The speed. The speed, 41%, followed by the early pressing types, 34%. And what the two has going for it is it is the – it does have – Jaramillo up, who has ridden it a few times. It's been riding it regularly. Last time when it came in second, it had Zayas. But Zayas jumps ship, or was he kicked off, and goes on number one. And Kaiko was number two. At the distance is one for four with two seconds. I got to think that two might overhaul this one. Uh, two is dropping in class for this. All right, let's expand on this a little bit. What about the seven? Little Belita, six to one shot. Zayas was on that one last time too in jumps. At least that one is one for three at the distance with a third. A win and a third. In the money out of 16 here. Tough one, tough one. Now, the one is coming off its best race. What are the odds of it doubling up like that? I I am going to say it probably will. I am going to go two here. I like two on top. I know the one has the speed. It's probably going to hang on. But who's one that can sneak in there at a bit of a price that can handle the distance? All right, we'll look at 10 minutes to post. All right, the obvious one that they're going to try and get home get home with is is 5. And if one is going to go off at 7 to 2, I'll use I'll use one underneath or maybe even on top. The other one I like is the 7.
What happened to a last race? I don't like the sevens race. It's rounds look a little on the flimsy side. I'm on one, two here, folks. I just, I just think that that's, they're going to get it done. They're going to get in there. I think I rod, he's going to need a collapse. I think it's as simple as a one, two box. And that's my play. What are the, what is the payouts on that? Probables one, two, 50. Yeah, it pays nothing. Uh, 1560, not nothing, but in two, one, 14, one, five, 38, five, one, 40. Yeah. Five is taking false money. I go two over one, seven, leave it at that. Let it go. Let it rip. Put in my play, and then I'm going to answer some questions here and see what we got here. Two over one seven. All righty. All right, where are we? Here we go. Seven over two over one seven. Exacta race two. Put this in. That's it. Since we're getting a bit of a price here. I may add the one on top too. I'll start with two over one seven for now and and, and let's see what we got. <clears throat> Not gonna go crazy in this either. <clears throat> Gulfstream race four, two over one seven. Oh, look at this, Amadeo. We're on the exact same picks. I'm feeling better about my picks already. Amadeo hit that big 104 exactor in the first race. Let's keep it going. Good luck, Amadeo. I love your picks here right here. This looks this looks good to me. Okay, who else? Two is going to go off clear favorite over the one. You know, Boris, I'm worried about the one though. I'm thinking about doing something with the one just one. As well, you know why? Because I think it has such a big pace edge that you may run off and hide on the rail. Big early pace edge. Is that what you think? Yeah, I, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm still concerned, Richard. That's what it looks like to me, too. I think that might be, I don't know. I, I If I lose on a race like this where I have such a pace edge, Maybe a one over two over um, all four of the others. Cover that way. Yeah, why not? Maybe we get this. I, that's probably not going to pay anything either. It all goes through one, two, folks. I think the seven's a little interesting. Now, if you look at the pools, I mean, five has taken uh, a lot of place money. I mean, that two five is 22, five two is 29. Listen to this. Okay, one five is 39.60, five one is 39.40. I mean, it all goes through, I don't think it all goes through five here. That's the thing. I mean, the race that ran well, I mean, it hasn't been running run, running well. Let's, let's put it that way. It is dropping in class. It has not been running well. And it's one race that it did run well on the dirt was at, at Monmouth. And it finished second by a nose.
This is no world beater, that, that, that five. I, I'd be more inclined to go seven, seven over five all day long. You know what? I'm I'm going to add the other exactor as well. I'm not getting sucked into this. Into this. What happens happens. If I lose with this one wire in the freaking field, I don't want to be and not having it. That would uh, be a disaster as far as uh, playing goes here. So I have two over one seven, and 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 I'm going to put. I just put one over two seven now as my other play, just in case. So my total play race two total wager exacta one two over one two seven. A bar is the blade. Now, that's my total weight. That's what I did. I did two over one seven. And the more I looked at it, the more I started to get spooked at the prospect of one wiring the field easily and, and missing when it has such a giant pace edge in the rail. And this is not like it's a mile and a 16th or longer. This is a, a, a mile, okay? And this one ran quick for seven furlongs. Um, and really, otherwise, the two has to dig deep back to a race early September where it won by a half a length distance to match its previous uh, to beat the one. It's going to have to dig deep. But it is dropping for Juan Alvarado. Juan Dropp, he wins 17%. And the two has Jaramillo up, who is no stranger to suspicious-looking rides. Uh, but one has – listen to one. All right, we talked about those sneaky trainers who win when they send them out at a very high clip. Number one, Sandino Hernandez Jr., he's one of those. He's one of those trainers who is getting it done when he does spot them, Okay. I feel better about my one already. And let's look at the trainer in the five. And who's riding the one? Edgar Zayas, a speed jock on the muscle. Gerald Brooks, the trainer of the beautiful star and I rod together. They're 0 for 1. He's 13% of Gulfstream. He's not one of those world-beating trainers. Trainers. Colin Maroff on the 7, 12%. It's Angel Morales and get spotted weight. So the seven is getting spotted weight and the race four back here at a mile at Gulfstream got it done in one. I, I'm, li I'm liking my one, two over one, two, seven. And how many minutes to post? One minute to post. Now let's go a step further, further, Boris. The crook is on five, beautiful star, nine to one available. Nine to one, it is, should be nine to one. It should have taken the money. Uh, uh, Listen, we had the race yesterday, Boris, again, if you're joining us late, where we uh, both Boris and myself, one were two of the people here on the show. Uh, yeah, I host the show, of course, and Boris is one who joined the show with his selections. Uh, we both, and there were some others that had it as well, but we were talked about this here yesterday. And at one point, Boris and I, we questioned whether we really deserve to win because we seem to be the beneficiary of a, a questionable ride by the jock who uh, was on the favorite. We beat the favorite. And at first we thought, you know, did we really deserve to win? Or, you know, I brought up maybe we should think about, you know, giving the money back to the track to donate uh, maybe to not the jockeys fund, obviously, but maybe the backstretch or to the facilities at Gulfstream. And then they could take the money that we hand back to them from our winnings. Uh, that they could put it to a good cause, a charity of their cause. But we decided not to go that route because uh, sometimes you, lo you lose money by races that way as well. But, yeah, five. Uh, what uh, Irod Ortiz had a day yesterday where he was on nine mounts, one, two on giant favorites, and he missed. He didn't do anything on some uh, other horses that went off his chalk. And he's on the five 
That's real suspicious money here. Five to two. I, I, I don't see how that one is five to two. They're betting I rod, simply. I got to think the one is going to come down. One is still three to one. Sandino, um, the trainer, Sandino Hernandez Jr. Who else? I'll try and get to these picks here. We move on. Thomas, two over one five. Good luck, Thomas. Boris, two are taken at the six, six to five odds. All right, that looks fair. I mean, if the one doesn't hold everything on paper anyway, and by the races it's run, two seems like the logical second choice. Or the five, or the seven, or two or the seven, really. If two doesn't fire, the seven is the next one in line. Two over one, five, seven. Good luck, Tony Vasilino. Good to see you, Tony. Frank, my usual Frank, 512, the wedding anniversary. Good luck, Frank. Um, yeah, you got to definitely, by the board, you definitely got a shot. This one was tailor-made for you by the board. Nicholas Thomas, 372 Exacta. Three, try $24. Good luck, Nicholas. Let's take a look at Nicholas's number three. I like to look at some of the horses we don't get the chance to mention or pick out of three. Okay, it should get the distance. And the question is, will it take, it's a synthetic horse, runs mostly, she runs mostly on synthetic, and she's a six-year-old, so she's a mare, and she only got started at four, and she does win sometimes, and she's dropping in class, and this trainer, Michael McDonald, with uh, droppers in class, does win 14%, has the numbers to be a borderline contender here if they can take to the synthetic. And when McDonald moves from the synthetic over to the dirt, he does win 14% out of 43 starts. So he does make this uh, transition uh, fairly smoothly at a nice clip. And he does have Edgar Perez up. He's 0 for 3 with Perez, but he's been in the money two out of three when these jockey and trainers combine. And Edgar Perez is 14% at Gulfstream. So he has some uh, – he, he's – have some uh, success here at this track. And the trainer has some success with the circumstances. And I'll tell you what, it's going to have to close into it, but let's keep an eye on it. I think it's going to go through one and two. Who else? Check the three. We just talked about the three seal. You're on that seal. All right. Good luck, seal. Who do you got this race? Seal. One, three, exact the box seal. All right, good luck. That three, three is a wild card I'm seeing here. I could see why you went with it. Uh, the crook is on five. Okay, who else? Tuna on toast. Chris Adkins. Super, one, two. Good luck, one, two, seven. I think you're good there with that start. One, five, seven, five, seven. I like the way you set up that ticket there, Chris. You realize that some of those early ones are already going to get the job early. A lot of people watching. All right, tune on toast. Good luck, tune on toast. One should set the pace nicely for it. Let's see. Uh, going with the two, and they're off. Richard is on two. Carl, good luck, Carl. One, two, three, and we're off. Even uh, ice water through the veins. One has dropped the five to two. I think the five is showing some unexpected early speed. And I, I, was, I think that Irod was trying to catch the one napping, but he wasn't napping. And now the horse race is on. It's, they all seem to be closing the gap on one. What is he dropping anchor on the one? I guess he's just slowing it down. Now I hate this front on. You can't tell anything. Okay, it still has a healthy lead, followed by two. And seven is starting to roll a little bit on the outside. Um, one still out front easily so far. And but two's coming after him, folks. And seven is starting to show a little bit of interest. I thought he would. Uh, my only hope here is that somebody, one of these first front two collapses and seven sneaks into this. Uh, I don't think I don't think one's coming back to the field. Two looks like he's breaking stride a little bit now. And uh, or is yeah, he's breaking stride. Uh, seven is starting to close on the two. Uh Oh, God. Is, is one going to get home? I hope so. It looks like two's going to get second, too. Eh, all right. We'll take the win. 
Thankfully, I put that in. Not going to pay much. I was hoping for the one to get up. I mean, the seven to get up. And look at five. What a pretender. All right. We get our first win of the day. And it comes in race two. For a whopping 1140, folks. So... Yeah, we made about 50% on our money. If uh, Yeah, about just, just under 50. What bank is going to pay that, right? All right. So we take it. And we move on. I'll get this. A 2-1-7 one, one, would have been 21 to 1. And 1-2 um, and turned out to be 10 to 1, really. No. Just over four to one. Almost five to one. We'll take it. Take what the defense gives it. All right. We got it. Nothing nothing fancy. This five was the biggest pretender in there. One just had too much speed. And if you notice, I did put in a two over one seven first, and I added the one over. One over two seven second. So we got that done a little bit. So we were just we're about e just just about even on the day here. Let me see something. Actually, actually down down a couple of bucks. Right around there, literally. And uh, so we're just basically even after two. So we just about got back what we lost after the first race, give or take, just a little short of that. But who do we got here? We, super, one, two, one, two, seven. I guess five got third, right? All right, Chris, you hit it. I, you, hopefully you made your money back on that. That was tough. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Going to lay the two, okay? <coughs> Tuna, on toast. Einstein said, don't give away your secret because they may no longer be a secret. Words of wisdom. Good luck to an on toast. Five is a class dropper with us, a tease. Thanks for that heads up, Gene. Gene, good luck today. Let's get it done here. Seal weighs in immediately. Um, daily double, one, two, three. Okay, so you got that with uh, three, four. I like three best next race, Seal, if that, if for what it's worth. I don't look. I don't have the four among my selections. Um, and I think this is. No, wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the fourth race seal. Uh, I do have three listed as my as my best shot. I actually think the seven is a player in this, but I have the four listed as well. So, and this race, the third race, is a scratch number six. I'm really not crazy that about this race. Yeah, yeah, this is not one that I especially like. When the third race is, uh, we'll look at it. I'll tell. I'll tell you why. Carl, good job. All right, got that done. Three dead last seal. Oh wow. Okay. I'm going back. Okay, I'm not. Uh, let's see. Check the three. We did check the three. All right, Nicholas. Ooh, I, I was thinking one, two, seven. Tony Vasilino. Okay, you got the place and one, five, seven. Ooh, one on top. <clears throat>
Wow. I'm surprised. Okay. I had the one on top, if, if that helps, but it, it evened me up pretty much for the day. Uh, pick four, Armando. Hey, Armando. Armando has hit a rainbow six, I believe, multiple times on the show here. Good to see you, Armando. How's it going? What do you got here for us? Uh, pick four. I hope some of you have a uh, one, two, seven. Okay, we're thinking the same way. Good luck. Thanks, Armando. Thanks for sharing your pick four play with us here. And you got it done here, beating the chalk. Good, excellent job. Uh, who else? And we move down. Good luck, Armando. Appreciate your channel, Tuna on Toast. However, we may enter, we may enter to Pandora's box. Good luck, Tuna on Toast. Let's get it done here. Better races that coming up. Who else? Uh, class. Hey, okay, let's catch up to this here. AC, hey Al, good luck to, for today to everyone as well. Thanks, AC. Good luck. Let's get it done here. Just place two each way, two over one seven five seven. Uh, trifecta. All right. That's gonna. I think this next race, AC, is a little, little not to my liking that much. I'll see if, what I can do with it. But I, if he, this is a very competitive card. Very, very competitive card. It's going to be a challenge, but we're up for it. I'm going to check if there are any new scratches. I need ice water. Thanks for reminding me, Blue Smoker. Got the cup, thermal cup. It works. There's still ice in there. I don't know if you can see the ice. Yeah, you can see it, see it in there. That's what we got. Where that ice water. A nice coffee break there. Oh, this thermal cup works like a charm. Had it here since before the first race, and there's still ice in there. That was great. All right, Seal. That way to go. Hey, a win is a win, right? Good job. Let's keep it going. Uh, who else? All right, Boris, better races ahead. And this isn't one of the better races. I'm telling you that right now. We're going to do the best we can with it, see what, what it looks like. <clears throat> Maybe the second time through, the third time looking through it, you know, something new comes. That if there's a way to play it, if I had to play it, how do I play the race? If my life depended on that race, how would I play it? They said, listen, you got to win this race. Somebody's pointing at me. you got to win this race. And if you use curtains, how would I play this third race under those conditions? Now, you don't want to play. <laughs> Look at it here. Okay. Amadeo, uh, exacto race two. Thanks, Alan. Everyone in chat, new to this, been learning from you guys for the last couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Um, uh, Chris Atkins. I'm glad you enjoy the show. Yeah. All right, good job. I like the way you structured that up there. Let's get it done. The blade will get back. Yes. Okay, now we look at race number three. We got 13 minutes to post. We can close this race down. We can all go to race three. We do have a scratch of number six. Number six, folks, is who I initially liked best, but liked best out of a wide open race. I still have four of them here that I see are contenders, and there's only there are four of six. Oh, brother. What a race. One that's Tapita horse running against dirt horses. I hate races like this. Emma Jane Wilson on two, the morning line favorite. I'm not using the two. I'm telling you that right now. Okay. Six furlongs on dirt, 6,250. Purse 21K for four year olds and up, weight 122. All right. For four year olds and up. So it's not maiden, it's just cheap, cheap claimers. 
and the type of horses that have been winning, and it's only six furlongs, so we should be able to square this away early. Early speed has been winning the most. The rail has been winning the most. And you got a closer on the rail. The type of running style winning the least are the, the closers, only 7%, whereas the early speed and the early close to the lead or on the lead, the hybrid type, early pressers, they can go either to the front or run stalk close second. Those two types have been winning 79% of these races, these six furlong races like this. And that bot, and that's a sample size of 303 races going back to December 3rd. 303 six furlong, six furlong races like this, 79% of them are being won by the speed. And you know who was the lone speed here? Number six, who scratched. So we got Cactus Jack out of the way, but we have three and four who fit the running style. Uh, Old Town's Road and Ben Copenhagen. Now, I just use I At one point, I lived right off of an Old Town Road, believe it or not. Is that a sign? And it is the number three. All right. <laughs> Not going there. Suspicions. Three does look like the early speed, though. Three does look like the early speed. Now we're going to go we'll look a little bit more at these. Race number three. Now, three has been running on Tapita, too. I'm not really claiming... Three, the three is coming down in class, and it is turning back, which I think helps. It gets back to its distance where it runs better. You know, if you look at its race four back and its race two back at six furlongs, and it gets some, it comes down in class. And for uh, Javier Morzan, who is 13% when he drops in class. Angel Morales up, so he's getting spotted weight, serious weight. He comes in at only 113 pounds, so he's getting seven pounds on this group. Yeah, I don't see the three finishing worse than second with this speed, early speed edge. I don't like the one and two. Both of them uh, are strictly torpedo runners. Never raced on dirt. You got... Emma Jane Wilson on the two. <coughs> Who's better suited? Actually, better suited. I tell you what, the one is has races on the on the torpedo. Four or five back. The two, the one. If you're gonna give one of them a break, I give it to the one because if the one runs this takes to the dirt at all, it's a danger. And I have one with a question mark. I'll give that one a fair shake. Look at the races three, uh, four, five back at Gulfstream. Now it has a st running style where it's kind of, and it's dropping in class today for uh, Marat Sankal, who is 16% with droppers and gets Junior Alvarado. Junior Alvarado rode that clunker on the seven in race one. Okay, now we're going to move down to the four. I'm not liking the four so much anymore. I like it's race three back in the mud. What happened in the last two? Why has it started to go south as a five-year-old? Ben Copenhagen. <clears throat> but the race three back, I. it just doesn't seem to like Gulfstream Park. It likes stream on a wet. I mean, it's races. I don't know what to make of this for. What kind of pace are we talking about here? I, I can't back this. It, ben Copenhagen. I think this one just likes it wet. And we're not wet today. So um, I'm really not on the... F I don't like the four. No, not on the four. The other one I like a little bit is the seven, Frolic Man. 
to talk about seven, and then we're going to open it up. The only thing I like about him is his last race. At this distance, it's Lionel, Re Lionel Reyes up. Weak trainer, Daniel Peter. Let me take one last look at this and, and just see where he fits. Pressing type. Closed very well last race. He seemed somehow he came around. He finished third. He just came out with a good race out of nowhere. I don't get it. What happened? At the distance, has three wins out of eight starts. It's a four year old. Did win at this distance in May. That's a good race. Maybe he's in good form. He's been working back. I think seven's a player. I, I'm be, between three, one, and seven. I, I, I'm i almost inclined. I, I got to look at the odds. Let's open it up. Let's see who you like here, everybody. We got seven minutes to post, so we're in good shape. We'll talk about these. Three is not taking any money, Old Town Road, believe it or not. I pawn. Well, the favorite is one at two to one, the three at five to one, and the seven that open eight to one is now seven to two. And get this both Claudius Padaro and Brian Madu, they're both Gulfstream analysts, they both like the finishing order to be four three. I think, I think three will be in the money. One is now a sound favorite, believe it or not. The other one that's taken the set uh, the second most money is uh, Shant. Emma Jane Wilson on the two. I just think one is going to be a player here. The question is, how fast can this one run? Does it have breeding to get into dirt? It's not the worst. Has quality road on the dam side. That was, I was, it was fast as hell on dirt. Trainer going route to sprint is only 3%. Marats and egg. Let's open it up. Who do you have? Any questions? Hey, 440 on a 50 cent ticket. Beautiful. That's a piece of, that's a work of art. A piece of something. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Chris. I didn't catch that earlier there. I'm trying to catch up, and that's beautiful. Two and a toast. I'm totally against the two. That's why I will win. I'll be shocked if the two wins two and on toast. That's a little bit about a little bit more about the two. It is dropping. <clears throat> All right, it has solid numbers, okay? It does, it, at six, it, I don't like the closing style. I think it, it, it find, it's gonna find itself closer to the lead based on how fast Emma James sent it the last time. I prefer for second. I, I don't like this race at all, to be 100% with you. That's what I try. That's what I do, folks. I, I'm straight shooter. I give it to you like I see it. For the four. All right. Good luck, Frank. That one was claimed. Oh, the one was claimed last race, do you mean? Was, if you talk about it, I'm totally against the two to a race six. Okay. I guess you're talking about race three. Okay. Good luck. Uh, seven, four. Thomas. All right. Let's get the exact uh, box one, three. I could see that happening, Thomas. I could see three getting a good lead and 
the question is who can run with the three? Is anyone here who can run with the three? Who else? Deepak, Mahoning. Oh, good luck, Deepak. Anyone with Mahoning info for Deepak? Good luck today, Deepak. Rich Lane, six over two, one. All right, that's not here. Good luck, Rich. Six is scratch for those of you playing here at Gulfstream. I guess you saw that. Uh, seven, three, exact the box. That's what logic t tells me, Chris. I, I like three and seven the best. Followed closely by the one. Can the two take to the dirt? That's the next question. Really doesn't have the lineage. Emma Jane rode that one at 10K, dropping in class. To Emma Jane Wilson's 4% here, three winners out of 74 races. Okay, how many minutes to post? Two minutes, time to get in my pick. Let's go see Carl. Good luck, Christopher. Uh, 732, Carlos Morantes. Good luck, Carlos. Gulfstream Park. Thank you. 1-4. I think that one is, scary, is spooking me a little bit, Richard. If that one can take to the turn back. Richard, we're in business here with that one, and I I don't know what the odds are now. I just want to check something else about that trainer. Not 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 really good going route to sprint, but what I like about it is the class drop where Sanke is 16%, and I, I just like it. I think with the quality road in there, maybe it can run on the dirt. How's it working out? Let's literally just look at the worst out. Workouts, 30 out of 99, 49, 6 out of 8, 48. I mean, he just never ran on dirt. It's a four-year-old. Okay. Still not convinced. On this, I'm overly convinced on the one. But I think it looks dangerous. I can't believe the three is three is nine, four to one. Well, I'd actually open nine to two. Who else? Boris, back to three, Old Town Road. You got five to one on that? Okay, hey, Boris. I think the three is, is, I can't see it. I got to think it, it, it likes this turn back. I think it's gonna it's gonna be it's getting spotted weight. Can anyone run with it early? I'm not gonna go crazy with this. We'll do a couple of exact boxes. Race. What happened to it last race? What the hell? I just got to check the four one more time here. Why is this Ben Copenhagen ha haunting me? Those races at Penn. What are the odds on four? Five to two. This is nice. Jeez. Okay, let's put it in.
Thank you, folks. All right. Exact of one three over one three seven. All right. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. Who do we got here? Who else? Blue Smoker won. <coughs> I think yeah, I was tempted to put in just a win bet on the one just by those back numbers. Seven. This is wide open, folks. Good luck, everybody. Beckins, four box. Giacomo, one, two, three, exact the box. Good luck. That is Emma Jane Wilson. There's three, Old Town Road, showing the speed is expected. Keith Black, four, two. Good luck, Keith, over four, two, one, seven. One, four, Richard, or one, three, four. All right, I think the one, if, if I really had to pick one, I would probably go one here. Uh, three has shown none of the speed that I expected from it. Um, I think one is going to wind it up and get rolling. Unless three is saving something. Here comes that seven, folks. And three, three, maybe three is saving something. But four looks pretty damn comfortable right now. And one is trying to sneak up the rail. It's hard to tell from this camera angle uh, how far back the one is. Uh, one is looking for room, doesn't really have it. Now three starts to exert itself. Uh, seven is, uh, three is coming. Come on, Old Town Road, get home. We don't have the exacta though. We did have the winner. Boris. Five to one, beautiful job, Boris. Beautiful job. One, three, one, three, seven. I thought maybe we're gonna get this. <clears throat> and seven decided to stop coming. One never involved. Uh, Emma Jane Wilson trying to make a run for second. Of course, Emma Jane did nothing here. And um, the one did nothing either. Who else? But we got this. We got this done here. A one, three box passing on the one. Good job there on that pass, Blue Smoker. Uh, okay, the three. Uh, who else? That was my play. It was the one that I liked best, the three. I thought the other one was the seven. I came late with the one. And um, I didn't mention the four, but I just didn't like it. I thought it did its best running at Penn, et cetera. It didn't seem to like the dry track, but it liked it today. So we go light, and we lost a little bit there. We're a few bucks down for the day. Not much, very less than 10 bucks. Let's put it that way. After three races, but we're going to go on. Who else? Two, four, one. Uh, Chris Atkins. Beautiful. Chris. Again, comes in off the super last race and delivers an exact a box. And that's going to pay something. And I'll tell you what that's going to That's beautiful. It really is a thing of beauty there. Uh, three, four. That's, that's 30. That's a 15 to 1 exacta. Great job. Great job, Chris. Keep it going. Keep the selections with us. Chris gave us the winners right there. No reason for any of us not to have had that. Great job, Chris. Thanks for being on the show. Give it out winners too. Thanks every, everyone for watching and joining the show. Uh, see who else? Tuna on toast. Yeah, totally against the two. And no, did not get it done. That two.
I think we are caught up here. Nice call, Boris the Blade. Uh, get you in a beauty puts me ahead for the day. Great job, Boris. We call that as Boris is coming back. Rich Lane is in the house. Mm. Good luck today, Rich. Better races ahead. We got just like you. Now, these races are very competitive coming forward from here. I mean, they're very tough. They really made it difficult today, but I've been through this card. I've been more than once, and then I looked at it again after to make any adjustments for scratches. So we are prepared. There's no excuse to be unprepared here. And for me, me I'm just you know, a handful of bucks down after three races, basically break just under breaking even, which is – you know, considering these three races, hey, that looking for better better opportunities ahead. It's a good thing I'm not getting hurt here with these races because they were pretty wide open. The first race, very wide open. Last race, wide open again. Seal, yes, you did seal Classic Empire. Yeah, that's a great seal. Thanks again for some very valuable information for you players out there sharing it with us here. And listen, I'm going to be back in just a sec in second or so. I got to reheat the coffee. I already got ice water. And we'll start taking a look at race four. All right? I'll only be a couple of seconds. Do you win on a weekly basis? Of, yes, I do, Gene, and I've been doing it for years now, going back to 2011. Do I win every single day? No, I don't win every single day, but I come out ahead on most days, and those of you who have been watching the show see that. Good question, Gene. And uh, even the best players sometimes can go weeks without winning, and then they turn it around. But uh, every single day? No, I don't win every single day. And I think anybody that says that they do is, <laughs> hey, listen, take that with a grain of salt. Because even the best player, it's not every day's Christmas with horse racing. But we're prepared here today and better races ahead. Good luck today, Gene. Thanks for joining us. Good question. I'll be back in just a few. Got to heat up the coffee and make a pit stop. And we're going to continue. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We six races. Let's get it done.
All right, we're on to race number four, the second part of the card, uh, second third of the card, three down, six to go. Start of the Rainbow Six. This, I'll tell you what, this Rainbow Six, I, I see a lot of contenders in a bunch of these races. I narrowed it down to one I like best, of course, but <clears throat> let's see what happens. If you're just joining us, welcome to All Horse Racing All the Time. I'm your host, Al, covering Gulfstream Park today on our daily live show which uh, covers uh, entire cards of the races from the first race right until the last race goes off at a specific track today we're at golf stream and we have open chat on our live shows a lot of people uh, who join the show and uh, welcome aboard let's win some money thanks for joining us good luck today let's take a look let's catch up on chat here and then we see who else is here okay She's a seal. I lost last week. You know, I told the story about Andy Byer. He went up to Saratoga and he lost for the first few weeks. A lot. He was down thousands. And in the final couple of weeks of the meet, he made a, made a ton back and he wrote a book about it. My $50,000 a year that was in the seven. So it's not uncommon for even the best of players to have losing days or losing weeks. It's part of the game. It, it happens to the best of them. And Seal, I've seen Seal hit some tremendous uh, uh, selections and plays on this show. So let's get it done today. Good luck. And uh, appreciate um, everybody who weighs in his. Gene, what is your best play when exactly daily? It depends. It depends. I take what the defense gives me. Um, I've had big wins on all of them. What is the best? Now the best ones are where I could find a, a, a races where I could find a few longer ones who are faster than the favorite, who was projected to be the favorite, and use them in combinations with others. And sometimes in big races like that, I'll load up a box, a number of them, <clears throat> in exactas. I'll you know I'll unload. Sometimes I'll go four a four horse box. Once in a while I'll go five. I haven't done it on the show. But and I've had some very big payouts with that. And the same thing with spreading in a double in one of the legs when you have long ones. Yeah, but, but getting right to the beginning one is a combination, even if it's a win play, that depending on how much you put on it, it could be if you find a very strong contender that's going to be going off at longer odds, much better odds than the favorite, and you see the favorite vulnerable. If you find a vulnerable favorite, things spring off of their uh, gene. Gulfstream, race four, Amadeo, exact, at 236. I, I have the six with a question mark. I like three best. And I see this race is open. I see this race is open. Oh, good luck. Amadeo hit a, a tremendous exact there earlier. Let's see. Who else? Uh, let's see. Seal, I made some bigger plays, pick fives and pick sixes. Yes. Man, I've seen you do. Good luck today, Seal. Laloy is in the house. Hi, Coach. Good luck today, Leloy. Good luck, Leloy. Let's get it done. Good to see you. Gene, Seal, Gene, Seal, Coach, Aberdeen. All right, Frank. Uh, Frank, I like one over three, six, seven, nine. No five, one, two here. Huh? Okay. Um, I have the one with a question mark. I actually have the six with a question mark. And we're going to look at that right now. Boris, I see the crook is on the favorite in the next race. Let's take a look at this. Race four, 12 minutes to post. Let's talk about it. Great job by Old Town Road. The three last race, Boris had that the three. And I liked it best, but I wasn't able to cash with it. I did a 1-3 one, over 1-3-7, and, and four slipped into second. And uh, but that three should have hit the style. He was going to go to the front and it saved his speed for the end and just blew by them. Got it done. Great job. Great job by the jock on that three. And that jock was let's go back there a second. Morales. Wow. Well, he seemed to be amateur hour. We didn't have any of the big main jocks in the last race, but he did a great job on that three. That's for sure. So we go to race four. This is uh, now we're on the all weather, the Tapita track again. And it's another sprint. This is going to be another one, folks. 
Five and a half furlongs, claiming 16K. Uh, Phillies and Mayors, four and up. Non-winners in a race uh, since November 23rd. Allowed two pounds. So no, it hasn't won since since in three months. Gets an extra two pounds. All right, no scratches, right? Okay, no scratches. Next race, no risk. I'm just seeing if there's any new scratches. No, we're gonna we're gonna be good for scratches for a while. Okay, and we got a nice field here for race four. So who is the projected speed in this race? I'm going to take a look at some of my pace notes. We got some a bunch of speed here. Drinks on me. I mean, that's a speed. Really ran quick last time out at five and a half. And the last couple... The five ran really quick, has I rod up, ran very fast early last time. The one, Island Magic, laid off. Let's just see what post positions are winning this, what type of entries are winning this, this type of race. Five and a half on the Tapita. Seems to be balancing out a little while, a little bit. The rail used to be dead, in, especially in five furlong sprints. In five, 215 race sample size. Going back to December 3rd. Okay, again, this covers 215 races. Who's been winning this type of race? The early speed types have been winning 36%. And the early depressing types have been winning 33%. Late pressers only 19%. So the ones that are quicker early are winning 69% or 69 races out of 100. This is a sample size of 215. And we have multiple entries in here that are that early depressing type. No real big early speed type, though. I have to think that drinks on me is the is the type that is most inclined to really gun it early out of this group of eight. Very strong record in the money, 10 out of 12 at the distance. Went to Peter, 10 winners out of, of, of 18. Six for 13 at, at Gulfstream Park. But we go down to number three. Why am I landing on three as my main player right here? That, my friends, is a question. Uh, two for six on Tapita. Has not raced at Gulfstream, but I'm going to talk about this one why i find it intriguing i like how it was run i like its last two races on tapita three back on tapita and that was at seven furlongs and i like its turf races at six or whatever very fast turf races and it gets a, a faster pace here which i believe helps number three danger Excellent mark. The trainer is 17% here. The biggest guy is Jock is 17%. Drops in class. It's run some disguised races in here. It hasn't been winning, okay? It only has three, it hasn't won in a while. Last race was on turf on the 3rd of July at Woodbine. And it ran on turf last race with Jose Ortiz and finished fourth, got to within one and a third. But what I like about him is the fast races are concealed by some wider trips. And it's usually around the wire. It always is close to the wire. It seems to do just enough not to win, but I think this time maybe we get a break with it. I like that they're dropping in class. And this trainer, Martin Drexler, get this, 400 races, when he drops, 25%. And he's one for four. He has one win in four tries with uh, Zayas. So I'm sticking with 
guns here is when we're done. How many minutes to post? Six minutes. Okay. What are the odds on the three? Six to one. It is making some money. All right. I'm going to cover the others as best I can here, given the time frame. Island Magic. Ronaldo Richards gets one back. I like the races uh, three, four back here. Last couple of races leave something to be, deci uh, to be desired. I'm on the three. <clears throat> what about five? I rod Ortiz, he's 18% with Victor Barboza Jr. Barboza Jr. is a 20% trainer covering over 2,000 races. And it's another one. Uh, now, this one's moving up in class with Irod and it's going to be part of the speed. Do I go with it? Now, moving up in class, Barboza Jr. does win a, a 19%. I think he's going to get speed challenged, Aunt Nadine. Am I just trying to beat Irod? No, I, I just think others are better. Has finished second twice. Um, um, the club moving up in class, he's, he's one for nine at golf. I'd be more inclined to use this one for second than to win. At the distance, as a win in five – it's not really not really floating my boat here. Let's go down to number six, Dancing Doll. This is another one now. It it has races, back races that that fit that are good enough, both on turf and tapita. And I think it had some trouble last time. I think six is a player more so than the five. The six has run faster than five before on both Tapita and Turf. And I want to go down to the seven a second. I think the seven has speed, but I think today he's going to get, he's really going to get tested. I think he's, I think five and seven and one are going to finish up in a duel. So I see the winner coming out of three or six, actually. Maybe a three six over a three six seven play. Let's open it up. What do you think? I, I think three and six are the ones to win. I I can't get the five winning it. I can't take the five price. I mean, he's crushing it at the windows. He's good. I I prefer it for second, if anything. What are the odds on the seven? Six to one. All right, I could see the speed duel causing a problem there. What are the un one? What are the, I, I'd box three with somebody three six. <clears throat> I like six at the price with Irod. Who do you got here? Let's open this up. Austin is here. Okay, let's get this. El Novato. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, El Novato. Good luck today. Great avatar there. Beautiful picture. Drinks on me. Yeah, dangerous. 367. I'm thinking 367 box here. Get it done out of those three. Uh, Bodic, uh, drinks on me. Good luck, Bodic. 357. All right. Try Richard one over three five eight. Good luck. One five six. Austin is in the house. Exact a box golf stream. One five six. Good luck. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Austin. Good luck today. Let's see. Seal one the, the last three on the daily double paid twenty to one. All right, Seal. Let's who else? Uh, Amadeo. Uh, Seal seven. Save money for the first golf stream race tomorrow. All they want is the five here. Yeah. Blue smoker. I'm a day Boris. Danger is my pick. Who's danger? Three. 
coming down eight to five to one now. Uh, I'm sitting on a war chest, seal, bars the blade, change it. I take a 92 win only. Okay. Um, not betting until the sixth. Okay. Good luck, uh, Joe. Uh, that's the odds, uh, coach, six to one. Shame it'll never last. I hope so. First, second, at least. Five is the winner. Good luck, Gene. Uh, Rich Lane, exactly. 305 to seven. Good luck. I'm going to have to get here. Boris, uh, how many minutes to post? One minute. All right. Then we're going to go bet. Real shame you can't take the odds in the U.S. I bet three danger comes down to seven to two. Gene, five, eight, seven box. Good luck, Gene. What about that eight? Eight's a player. I'm telling you, this is a wide open race, folks. If I had to pick two, I like three, six best. Uh, three best. Five, eight, 18, 11 to eight. Good luck. Boyd, this is a very tough race. Good luck, Boyd. You know, maybe you want to hang on until till one of the other ones. Uh, Boyd, 6, 8, 11 in race 8. Boris, Sheen, okay. Rye, England. All right. I think we're getting good odds on 3 and 6. Let's look at the pools. All right, let's do it this way. It's one of our spread exactors. Race four exactor. Since I like three that are taking money. There we go. We win, we win. It's a wide open race, but I there are three that I talked about why I like these entries. All of them have entry races that are fast. <clears throat> I will add one to the mix, and I'll tell you what what one that is going to be. I'm going to make it a true four horse box here. make it total wager race four because I like the race three back of the one or just add this Five is even money. I'll tell you what. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy this race. I, I'm, I'm just really curious. As far as the blade, going in the gate, danger, lots of money. Okay. I like it. Total wager, one, three, six, seven. I added the one to this box. Chris, good luck, seven, eight, box. Four, seal is a great horse. Joe, good luck in this race, everyone. Kelvin, three, five, three, five, two. Good luck, Kelvin. Who else? Uh, Seal, Dime Super, three, five, six, seven, three, four. Good luck. Thomas Silks, five over one, two. Good luck, Thomas. A Blue Smoke, five, six, seven, eight. No bet for me. All right. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. And finally, this show, there's the speed duel we were looking at here. And seven starts going. Eight is involved, folks. I expect six with Jose Ortiz to close. I'm looking for three to start to roll a little bit. Um, Jose, where are you, man? 
Where's the three is what I want to know. Uh, okay, seven heads for home in front, followed by five. Where's three? Where's six? Three and six are not coming. It's going to be number six. It's going to be seven, eight, folks. And it's seven, eight. You have a winner, and it's Chris Atkins delivering the blow. At 10 to 1. Great call. Holy smokes. What's the finishing order? What, what did six get third? Eight, seven, six, three. Chris, tremendous hit. Tremendous hit. I whiffed there, so I got some work to do today. And um, we got the seven, and I'm just surprised that the three didn't show up, the six didn't show up, but the eight, we said it, it, it did look live a little bit. Very tough race. And so far, Chris has it. Who else? Okay. That's the that's the that's the try box there, blue smoker. <laughs> you were on though. You were on there the fourth, but that's not what I'm looking for there. Well, three, five, six, seven, six, eight. And Gene delivers. Great job. 8-7 exactor. Tremendous. Tremendous call, Gene. Congrats. Great job. Who else? I ride again. He was on a big favorite and does not deliver. But I didn't think he was on the best horse here. I don't think he deserved to be a race. Who else? I think we got it covered, folks. And now we move on. Now we move on to race five. Well, great job, everyone who had this. We move on to race five. It's looking down. Good race. Well, you know what? That that was a that was a rough race. That was a rough race. I the, the ones actually the best horses didn't deliver this race, and I wouldn't change anything about that play. At what and <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's it's a challenging game. Anybody that tells you, oh, it's an easy game, they're full of it, folks. You know, and, and if you look at the pace scenario here, I mean, the seven, the, the speed duel did mature. Was the one ever even involved in the space duel? Blue Smoke and the five? Yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal. Um, was, uh, Thomas Silk, see, it always happens when you don't play. Yeah, that was a beautiful pick by uh, your pass, Blue Smoker. I mean, that was a beautiful play. That's a that's a two hundred sixteen dollar trifecta for fifty cents. It's a twelve dollar play to get back two hundred sixteen. But you know what? You know what are the odds? And you know, and you throw the four in there for, instead of the five. The three in there. So this exactly was one hundred forty four, and 
the try was 216.45. You get the eight out of there and I'm in, but it's not going to pay as much. You know, the one time you need Jose Ortiz to come up, he, he decides to take the day off. But it doesn't matter because the eight won that race. And who is this? 410? Good luck today. I'm not sure what your name is, but hey, great avatar picture. And good luck. Thanks for joining us. Tuna on toast. Wow. Okay. Seal was one of those races. One of those races, but some great job. We had a couple of winners in here. Uh, Crimson G. Great job, guys. Let's keep it going. Thanks for sharing your selections, and then we move on to the next race. And I rod again. Okay. What are you going to do, right? I mean, this was my preliminary play. Three, six, seven. What did we get? Second and third. Three took the day off. Who's the jockey on that three? Zayas. Who are the jockey on the other two? Eh, let me just look at these. Well, the jockey on the seven was Edgar Perez. I mean, Irod was the big guy in here. And if he, he re, he's, he's not, I don't know what to say. I don't think he was deserved to be favorite like that. So I really don't have no complaints about him. And you have a relatively unknown trainer on the eight who's, did have some races on dirt that are fast enough to win this. And the last race was good enough, you know, to compete. And he came in fifth, and he was stuck four wide and got it done here with all the pace. So good job there. And the, tra and the trainer, the jockey on that is relatively unknown. Only one win starts. Ivan... Pantelli Jr. or Pamatel, one win out of 30 ad starts, but he gets it done here. That's race number two for the jockey of the eight. And we move on, race number five. Another wide open race. Let's talk about it. Gulfstream. They're making it, it's a challenging card, folks. But in horse racing, there's a saying, and it goes something like this. Let's get some ice water. Ice water in the veins. You're not still thinking about the last race, are you? Are you? So, and I'm talking about whether you lost the race or whether you won the race. You want to be playing the races on an even keel. Whether you win, if you win, you don't want to get too high and start throwing money around. If you lose, you don't want to go into despair and start Chasing money, going to the ATM machine. Hope you're not going to the ATM machine already this early if you're at the track or making deposits, are you? You set your bankroll, you're wagering accordingly. Not that you get tapped out a few races into the car or, or chasing losses. And you want to be in the same emotions whether you win a race, whether you lose a race, or whether you don't play at all. It's like you're playing with ice water in your veins. You got ice water right here. So the last race is in the books. Now we're on to a new race. Even keel. We'll get it done. And in racing, all it takes is there's always another race. If you're not comfortable with a race, and I'll tell you what, um, I'm just going to go back. One of, our, one of us right here on the show did some tremendous handicapping last race. Uh, Blue Smoker, H1. It gave out a trifecta play that actually played paid close to two thousand for two dollars and over two hundred for fifty cents. But he said no bet for me. But I want everyone to take a quick hard look, quick look at this and, and pay attention to what Blue Smoker showed us here. He showed us tremendous discipline. We're talking about there's always another race. He liked these horses, but he had the discipline to say, you know what, this race is kind of way wide open. I like, you know, these are the ones I like, but I'm not playing it, okay? I'm not playing it. I'm, he, he told us what the deal was. On the level, straight shooter. And, yeah, his picks were on, but.
but he showed discipline and he showed us something here too that, hey, you don't have to play every race. I mean, I've hit races on this show numerous times where I told you up front that I'm not, you know, I'm not playing the race. And, uh, but these are my picks and they came in like uh, Blue Smoker, his picks came in right here. And he didn't just say, these are my picks. I'm playing it. And then come in and say, whoa, I hit the trifecta. I had it for 10 bucks. It, discipline, race discipline. Blue Smoker showed tremendous discipline. And you'll come out uh, ahead as a player in the long run if a discipline and scrutiny when, to, uh, when selecting where you jump in. Great job. Uh, blue smoker and great, great selections there. Shows your play is really on the money here. Uh, who else? Um, great, the on the favorite again. He's getting favored every single race, Boris. I have, I, I landed on one here in this race. Looks like a winner incoming. Let, all right, let's see what happens here. See, I didn't like that horse 45. Yeah. Hungry Monk. Race five, 137, try box. Good luck, Hungry Monk. Welcome. Great job. On the, thank you for sharing your selections. Enjoy the, enjoy the races and good luck today. Verdeen. Check the, oh, seal. Check two. Uh, I will. I don't even have the two listed here, Seal. We'll get to these and all of them. Emma Jane has to be the worst jockey on her. She's just, she's just unbelievable. I mean, she did win a race or two maybe a week ago, but oh, oh, she's doing nothing on mm, that one horse she was on in what the first race. I think did nothing with a good. I can't see. Oh, check number two. Is that the reason? Emma Jane Wilson. I'll, okay, I'm going to talk about that one in a second. Has no pace. I'll tell you that right now. <clears throat> I see it, Seal. That's uh, Emma Jane Wilson. Yeah. I don't have it listed at all. I've been backing the favorite and hoping it's a, okay. I'm backing. Let, let's take a look at that three. Let's take a look at the. You only bet Emma Jane Wilson at Woodbine. Excellent point, Joe. That's. You know, she's halfway decent or had been halfway decent there. And Spy Novel, race five, let's talk about it. One mile on turf, optional claim, 35K, purse 39,000. For three-year-olds, which have never started for a claiming price of 35K or less, and claiming price 35, weight 120, non. Do we need to hear all this? All right, well, let's go on. Nice. Other than a maiden or claiming allowed two pounds. All right, so some will get two pounds. And weight does make a difference, especially at a mile. Two pounds could be three quarters of a length, a length and change. Otherwise, they wouldn't include that for certain conditions. And it's gravity is involved with the weight, carrying the weight over these distances. Even if it brings the horse closer to the earth by a hair, okay, it's going to make a difference, especially the longer the race. And we have no scratches. We have seven entries. This should be like shooting fish in a barrel. But I actually have five of them who I think have a chance, if you can believe this. Spy Novel, all right, has the highest prime power ranking for Brisnet. I do have them listed, but I will talk about them because I'm sure you're all itching to or wondering what's up with Spy Novel. Okay, it did run a, it, a race much better than all the others it raced last time. And it moves up in class and has early speed. Moves up in class for uh, Safi Joseph Jr. So you get the leading trainer and the leading second leading trainer and the leading jock on this one. Second time Lasix, 31% is Safi Joseph Jr. And you got Irod Ortiz up. He's 27%. Early speed. Who's been winning this type of race? 
early speed, winning a little bit more than the late pressing type, 31% to 28%. And there is another early speed in here, number four, right on Richie. Just was going wire to wire last time on the Tapita. Did have a wire to wire winner at a mile at Colonial. But three is just faster earlier than the four. So he gets. All right, let's talk about it. Now, why on earth am I on, am I on number one? who gets Paco Lopez. <sighs> okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just bringing it up here. I like its last race on turf. I think it got stuck wide last time and ended up covering more ground than they intended to. But no reason to lose that kind of ground inside today from the rail, not, not from the rail, right? Had the rail last time and it lost ground. How the hell did that happen? It was 10 lengths off the lead? I, I'm not getting this. What happened when Jose Ortiz was up last race? How did that one end four wide and 10 off the lead? Trailed inside, went four wide. Ran on for show. Brutal trip. I don't get it. I I really don't get it. Okay, but we're going to go look at three. Okay, three has a couple of races. Good on its speed now. I mean, you can't, you can't fault it. I mean, it's... The coach on the one, the trainer, the coach on the one, the trainer on the one is Carlos Luis, Luis Perez. He is a 12% trainer, 11% at, at Gulfstream. Paco Lopez is treading water. He's about 10%. here. Percentage is really taking a hit. Not coach Abernathy, the two with Emma Jane Wilson. One, it's only race. No, no, I, I don't see it. Too slow, just too slow. I know it closed in at seven and a half, but I don't see it. Ten to one, it's way too low. The odds. I like the fours last race actually, and on Tapita. I mean, it kind of fits a little bit, and it's turf races. Four back, came in second by a nose. No, that's, it's turf race at Colonial, uh, did win. I don't think the four, I don't think the four is all, all that impossible. What are the odds on this thing? Five to one. I think he might give this, I think he might give this, wind up giving this other guy fits here, the three. At least he's not moving down. You got Larry Rovelli as the trainer. Let's go down a bit. Coach Abernathy? No, no. <laughs> I think the six could make some noise. Jose Morales comes off a victory, 11%. Claudio Gonzalez, Claudio's 21% here, and he's 22% with Jose Morales. So, so far, the two that I'm really finding interesting are the one and the six. Anybody else? What about the five? Beachfront Charlie. I'm looking elsewhere. <laughs> Canal, first races. All right, let's open it up. 
I just want to see the options board here. Okay, one. Um, I think six is live, folks. I think six is live at a price. I think six six could run certainly run with the three. It, if you take into account ground loss, anything like that. And you know what? The six is, has run. I expect some improvement on the six with its second race on uh, turf. One for one on the turf. I think we're going to have a speed duel between the three and four. So I'm liking one and six here. And they're both a little bit of a price. Do I box it with somebody? I don't know. Let's see. Let's open it. The host. Five minutes. Frank playing Mahoney. Good luck. Okay, Jean coming off a night tremendous hit. That means she's going to win here at ten to one. All right, spy novel. Um, okay, I don't think he's a lock spy novel contender, of course. Okay, the poor punters need a break soon. I think one. If the one runs in a straight line, I think it's the fastest one in here right now uh, on turf and needs a straight trip. No four wide stuff. Good luck, Gene. Who else? Bars uh, three spy novel at six to five. A little more on that three bars than six to five. Carlos Rios, hello, Goldstream. One, four, two, eight. Good luck, Carlos. <clears throat> One, six, seven. Good luck, uh, Chris Atkins. I, I like those. I definitely like the six. I definitely like the one. And I'll tell you, we're going to go back to the seven a second. The seven, if you go back and look at the race it ran two back on dirt that one has some speed and it's getting its first time lasix today and i think the three and four are going to compromise each other which really opens it up one six seven there and i, I think that's a player at a price and who else Good luck, uh, Chris. Where were we? <clears throat> okay, try seven. I'm likely going to exact the box one six seven there. And Gene one three five box. Good luck, Gene. Three win at Gulfstream. Good luck, Austin. W.A., I'd explain that a pony is, but my throat is a little hoarse. All right, DePonte, love it. Good luck today. Welcome aboard. Christine Oliva, hello, Christine Oliva. Good luck today. 613 is a good choice. I What I might do is, <clears throat> maybe not the exact, maybe I'll do something with a try or super. Yeah, let's look. Who else? Keith. Six three one six one six three one six one three. Good luck. Uh, Emma Jane is due. Oh boy, she, I think even if she's due, she's real. This that number two really needs to improve greatly to compete. Uh, good luck, DePonte. Um, WA. Try box one three four. Good luck, Thomas. Odds six is ten to one. Canal, yeah, I can see canal there. <clears throat> Hi, Rod. Let's take a look at the pools here.
In the pools. Who's taking the money in the pools? I'll tell you what. One and one, three is taking the most. Followed by, followed by one. Followed by seven. Believe it or not, the two is taking some money. Two is taking more money than the than the six. If you can believe that. Tough one, tough one. Hey, one three on top, maybe. Do I take the shot with the six? Taffy Joseph Jr., bet against that one. Jeez. <laughs> We try and beat these dogs. All right, nothing fancy. Let's do it up. Exacta, race five, exacta. All right, let's do it this way. One three over one three six seven. <clears throat> I just look at the seven a second. Seal Super Dime. Good luck, Seal. Race number five. Tough race. We're really battling here. I'm Seems too easy, right? Let's see how easy it is. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. Seal. Messed up with that four. No time to change it. I was looking at the 5-2 with Jose Ortiz. It just seems a little slow. It would be a hunch play based on the jockey, so I'll leave it alone. Good luck, Seal. Uh, all right. Seal has that two on top there with uh, Emma Jane. Good luck. 401 box for me, AC. Good luck, AC. Okay, Rich, one over two, three, seven. I, one straightens it out. It's the winner. I agree. Good luck, Thomas Sills. Uh, one, three, four. Good luck, Thomas. Who else? Boyd. Come on, Boyd. Okay, let's get it done. Boyd, court six. One, three is a good choice. Good luck, Boyd. Uh, three horse to win here. Good luck, uh, Austin. Uh, one, three, five box, Gene. Uh, one, six, seven box. I like that, Chris. Good luck. I like it for the exact. Uh, I actually, I don't have time to do any adjustments, but good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. Carlos. Good luck, Carlos. 5A. Uh, Boris, the blade on the three. As I ride our T's up. Enjoy the race. 
So I expected uh, three and four out front early, the early speed, but it looks like four goes alone. And Irad Ortiz is not going to use the early speed this race on Spy Novel. And one is going to find a way to turn this into another wide trip race. And who is that on the outside? That's the seven. Now, here comes Emma Jane Wilson up the rail. So far, the race is playing nothing, nothing like I anticipated. I anticipated four up front, but I expected more three. Uh, looks like Irod is pretty much taking the day off here unless he starts moving. Here comes one. Thank heaven somebody is moving. I need the one or the three. I got to think that, that now, now the six is moving. Oh, brother. Good job, six. One, I like the long shot, and I didn't put it on top. It's, oh, no. Come on, one or three, but good luck, everybody else who has it. No, it's still four. Here comes three is coming. Three shoots up the rail. Don't make it three, one. Oh, brother. Cheap little exacto. Can you get the six home free? So we, we got a super. We got all of them here. But all right, I'm complaining and just won the race, right? I won money and lost. I won the race and lost a couple bucks. <coughs> <coughs> Terrible, just terrible. All right, three one. Yeah, maybe they could take them down, Deponte. Maybe they could take the three down, make it three uh, one six. So I won and I lost, right? I didn't. I was going to leave the three out, believe it or not, because I thought the three was going to have trouble with the four. Good. I guess you got to give Irod credit for not getting sucked into a speed duel with the four who completely fell apart. And so he had horse left to come on. And I'm very disappointed in the six, not doing better than that. And who else? All right. Yeah. Keith, got all three of them in there. Good job. Boyd, nice picks. Good job. Uh, three to win at golf. Boston, good job. Gene, you had the one, three, five, one and three in there. All right. Yeah, I didn't like the six to five, but you know what? You take it. That good job there, uh, Boris. He got it done. I didn't think he was for a little while there. Of course, Emma Jane was nowhere to be found. Why does she get why Verdine? Uh, Verdine, why has to be? Why does she get mounts here? Is what I'd like to know. What? How is she getting mounts at this track? What is she doing to get mounts? What is her work ethic? or her results done to warrant getting these mounts. She's on four of them. <clears throat> she was slated for four of them today. So what, two of them done already or three? I don't know. Just like in, in at Naira, you know, Mike Luzzi gets mounts and he struggles to win at 2% or whatever. Three, and he's been getting mounts for years. What is this guy doing? You know, that's is does he have something on somebody? Does Emma Jane have evidence or something? I don't know. Why is she getting mounts? Uh, Boris, home you go, made 30 easy, winner, no chance that gets slung out. All right. Good job, uh, Boris. And Boris has turned it around in the profit. I'm not in the profit yet. I'm not in the profit yet. I'm one hit away.
Who else? One got squeezed. Are we dead? <coughs> Richard, I'm wondering why that one was suddenly out wide again. How do they got squeezed, I guess. Keith, that's six. Yeah, yeah, I needed that too. It would have been a win. Uh, it would have been about even if I had hit that with the uh, – with the, if the six comes in second, I'm, I'm about even for the day. The one, I, I lost – I lost a few bucks. Winning the exactor and losing, right? That was the worst case scenario with uh, three winning over the one. Chris, I, I think that I think I, I didn't like, I was going to toss the three also. And I, of course, I thought he was going to get caught up with the four, you know, so. Hey, hang on a second. There's an inquiry here. Gene, wait a second. Who's this against? Oh, it's a three on the two early in the race. Take them down. Take them right down. One six, baby. We're up. To, we're then we're up, uh, up in good shape here. They'll never take the three down. They'll never take the three down. That's uh, and this too much. Too many people put money on it. I don't even know who is this with all this interference. He's on the outside now, whoever it is. I don't think it was it even against the three. I don't think so. Very interesting. Okay, now come in here. It's so entangled. I'd say take either that or take the one down and move the six up. I best case scenario for me would be one six or one seven or take somebody down, please. Watch. They take the they take the one down, <clears throat> they take one of the others down and they put the four up for a second, and I wind up losing even more than I did hitting the exact. Okay, I want your opinion if you have it, if somebody has it. Who is this against? What's going to happen? Carlos Rios. Uh, all right. Good luck, Carlos. Thanks for being here. 317 objection, jeans. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to get somebody serious. Wow, it's against I ride here. Let's see. Uh, Blue Smoker drifted in on the six. While one was being jostled, three may have cut off the one. Take them both down. Yeah, there you go, Seal. Out of all these inquiries and all these bumping into each other, somebody should come down. At least one of the first two, right? I don't know who this is even against. Watch they take one and three down and six winds up winning. Six, seven? There's an exacta. I know some of you have that. <clears throat> Who else? Maybe that six comes in now. Yeah. That would be, I'd love that. Stewards review, they're still looking. Gene predicts it should stay up. Let's see. I'd be, I'll be surprised if they don't change it after all of that. 
Now, well, made it a little exciting anyway. No comment, and uh, on that, on that, on that decision. When I was watching the race live, I didn't see anything, but it definitely looked like things were going on there. And um, hey, they looked it over, and I guess too many people had this to bring down. What do you think? Looked like there was a lot of interference there, but no change. Maybe too many, too much, too much inside money on the one and the three to bring this down, folks. But if the six was, that's seriously, um, it looked like a lot was going on there. Maybe a lot going on. Uh, how they make these decisions, who knows? All right, I'm going to make a pit stop. I will be right back. We're down to the late pick four. That's Austin Company, uh, Austin Country. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, I want to thank everyone for being here today. All horse racing, all. I'm Al, your host for the live show, the daily live show. I do cover a track each day. And uh, today's Gulf Stream, and it's an early track. And we cover the races from the time the first race opens right up until the last, giving you analysis, selections, and plays for every race with open chat. If you enjoy the show, if you like the show, uh, you want to see more shows like this, the channel is pretty new. Uh, there's a thumbs up so um, down below the screen. You click on that. And also you click on the subscribe button. And uh, so you get notifications or uh, reminders when you go into YouTube when we're going to be going live again. All right, and I want to thank everyone for being here. We got four races left, and I'm just going to heat up my coffee, and I think that's going to be it for the coffee, and uh, make a pit stop. We'll be back in a few seconds. So on to race five. We'll be right back. Who else? Let's see where we are here before I go. It was three. Wow, it was three. That was the culprit. Yeah, they're never going to take him down on that. Safi Joseph Jr., Irod. You kidding me? It's like in New York. Do you expect, you expect them ever to bring Pletcher down if he has uh, one of those jocks on his horse? He could practically knock the other horse over the rail and they won't take him down. <clears throat> okay, I will be back in just a second, a couple seconds. Thanks for being here, everyone. Let's get it done here. Four races to go. Now, I hit that. Ex before I, before I, how much time before the next race? 17 minutes to post. It was the three. All right, I just want to see who had this. Three one. I think everybody had the three that race. Yeah, I did announce the, the people who had it before. And that was before I knew there was going to be an ejection. Um, yeah, Blue Smoker was the three. They were never going to change it. I agree. I'll be right back, folks. Stop and let's late pick four here.
On to the late pick four. Uh, this will be a pick four that probably pays a lot unless we get a lot of chalk in there. I landed on number six this race. Um, I think if I rod would have lost that race, even if they took him down, he might have needed a police escort to leave the building. Uh, <laughs> so let's see what happens going on to race number six. We got ice water, but we, uh, we we got hot coffee, but we go to the ice water here. Good to take a coffee break in between. I, I landed on eight, getting Lasix, eight all. Uh, <clears throat> I'll talk about why. Uh, Joe is in, weighs in, first to weigh in here. Good luck, Joe S.O. All right. Thanks for sharing your selection. Thanks for everybody for being here today. <clears throat> so we get rid of the fifth race. We go go on to race six. Get these PPs, all of them up for the rest of the card. Seven. And we'll look ahead here. I think we might have an opportunity to connect on something uh, that pays a little bit. <clears throat> I don't try and force it. Yeah. I, Swing for the fences that way. I, I like to believe I have a shot. Five and a half. Okay, we're back on the Tapita again. An allowance race. Race six. Let's see if there are any late scratches that we are unaware of. I mean, okay, just the three and the 12 in race eight. And the, okay, we only have a couple scratches in race eight. So we're pretty clean going forward. Look at this board. Wide open. Wide open. I said it's a challenging card, and we're seeing it right here. Okay, so we have <clears throat> five and a half furlongs all weather, 54,000. Philly three-year-olds, which have never won a race other than a maiden claiming, or starter, which have never won two races. Non winners of a race other than claiming allowed two extra pounds. Okay. We have a ton of speed signed on here. Early speed is winning 36%, but the early to pressing types, who are the other three? We have five earlies, and the other three are early pressing types. They've been winning 33%. It's all about the speed, so that's where it's at. None of the post positions really have an edge over the others. Maybe two, post two and three have a slight edge over the others and very slight 13 percent versus 12 percent of the others what do you make of this this is as an even a, a race as you get <clears throat> i landed on eight best and then three four and six with a question mark How am I on Clay Soldier when Clay Soldier is actually opening at nine to two? I'll tell you how. First thing I'm going to do is look at who's the speed of the speed. So we'll go to some pace notes. I think Clay Soldier does have the pace edge, but he's been running at five. And it gets Tyler Gaffleone instead of Lionel Reyes, Reyes, who which is an update. Upgrade. I'm not on the five, which is uh, Miss, which is Emma Jane Wilson. I just think others are faster than this one early. Has some early speed, but the others are faster. It's a Woodbine entry. Emma Jane moved this one. Uh, the last time, grabbed the lead the last couple of times. Rode this one to victory back in November at Woodbine. I can't go there. And Lasix, I like that it keeps getting better. Uh, Gaff Leone is up. Trainer, leaves something to be desired. Henry Colazzo, only 7% at Gulfstream, and that's over 1,100 ratings. Adding Lasix, first time. Send a good adding Lasix. 52%. I mean, 6% adding Lasix, but does hit on a bomb once in a while. That's that's the best thing I could say about this one. And it has what looks like early speed here. What I don't like is that it seems to run. It's always around the wire. 
and it's been running at five furlongs the last two, and now we're getting a stretch out. Let's go down up to number three, who I'm looking at. Edward Pleaser Jr. It's been running in Stakes Company. Uh, the last time it ran at this distance, but it was running it on uh, regular <coughs> dirt. It did win by two and a half, and it has a lot of early speed. You know, <laughs> Can it take to the tapita? It does get license for the first time. And this trainer, Edward Pleaser Jr., with of the three, does win 20% of the time getting first Lasix. 17% with Edgar Zayas up. So the time passage, I think this is going to be part of the pace. The other one, four, hoax, pleasuring my rod. Uh, others are faster, so I'm not going to – Really not inclined to go there. Six. I'm almost forced to go with eight. The other three, the other ones I'm talking about. Even five. Oh, God. What about the trainer in the five? 11% at Gulfstream. William Therinos. Him and Emma Jane Wilson were 17% together. Say it ain't so. Don't tell me I'm going to switch to five. Wired the field once at this distance, a first and a third. I mean, it's... I think the seed, I'm looking for some turf breeding in these dirt horses that I'm looking at here. Got to think. Something getting the Lasix Zayas up. All we're asking from this one is to carry the freaking load uh, based on the pace uh, pace numbers he's been setting at at um, at longer distances. Training uh, tra has raced. On it's the class coming out of stakes races. Quandry, quandry. Four has some early speed on the tapita. I rod. Got beat by some of the others in here. Clay Soldier and Old Darlin. Got beat by the two. Got beat by the eight. I think eight is one you got to pay attention to with the Lasix. I think three is the one you got to pay attention to. And uh, four, Hulks, let's look at the board and let's open it up. I'm thinking more pick three play here. Three minutes to post. Wow, I can't believe three is 11 to one. Eight, nine to five. Hoax. What about Emma Jane? Hmm. Tough, tough one. Who do you like here? I'm thinking about it. I'm on. I'm. I'm leaning three or eight to get this done here. <clears throat> five. Uh, let me just look at the five for a second. I just just how it shakes out. Not the five. The four. The four does have some speed. I gotta think. I Rod's gonna try a little harder this time. I, but that's another one that usually goes five. I mean, the eight keeps getting better. Let me just look at the six for a second. 
I don't want to rush this. I don't want to screw this up. A hoax. I'm just looking at hoax. Yeah. Paco up on three. Tough one, Clay Soldier. Eh. What do you think here, folks? One minute to post. I'll get some picks in here. Gene, <clears throat> five, six, eight. Good luck, Gene. Number two and eight. Concerned about the two. Boris, 10 on six. Good luck, uh, Boris. Three, four, six. Good luck, Richard. Sharuz, the track was start punching everyone that complained. Yeah. Zach the box two eight. Good luck, uh, Carlos Reyes. Okay, I gotta add, enter this in here. Keith, good luck, Keith. James, one four in the money. Gene, five, six, eight box. All right, let's enter it in here. Race number six. I got to think three is going to be around. You know, a tough one here, folks. Let's get a look at the two one last second here. Just, just to, I, I can't go two. I can't go two. All right. I don't like the two. If it beats me, it beats me. Eight over one, three, six. It's in. Exact. Not going crazy. I like three for its early speed, and uh, yeah, I do that it's running stakes company. Good luck, Verdeen, please. Uh, five, four, double. Good luck, Verdeen. Okay, uh, two, four. All right. Good luck, Jamie. Robert Wicks. Good luck, Jamie. Three, two, get ready. One, four. We got them covered there, Jamie. Good luck, everybody. Uh, Keith. Uh, six eight five tough race. It is a tough race. Let's go here. Uh, and we go here. My exact eight over one three six. And they're in the gate, everybody. Good luck. Enjoy the race.
So far, Clay Soldier is the favorite. Emma Jane Wilson for you, Emma Jane Wilson fans on the five. Um, who does go to the front all the time, but I think others are faster. We'll see what happens here. And eight does go to the front, but here comes one. The race that one had on the turf last race. That's why I used it here. And eight is running in fourth. Three is showing the speed I expected it to show. Um, really showing it. Three is showing that speed too. And now uh, who's there running on the outside? Eight is coming. Five is coming. Six is coming. One is hanging around. Uh, three at a big price, folks. It has this, it's showing the speed I, I expected it to show. And it looks more like I'm, I'm going to get a hose for not using it on top. Oh, no. And the three does win at a big price. I was going to use the damn three and eight in a double. And uh, I would never use the two in a jack. I should have just stayed on the three. Damn. I put too much into the two. I'm glad with my picks, though. I'm glad that I had the... Uh... Wow. Look at my notes. I actually changed up from my initial notes. I got them here in my hand. Don't make changes. Well, sometimes it works out, but look at this. I got them in my hand. The ones I like best. For race number six. How's that for egg in your face? Eight, two, and three. And I had four and then six with a question mark. So you see next race, I like four and six best, almost even. So I just box my three and I think I get the try there. The good news with that is the handicapping remains solid today. And the two did get second. I didn't like the second, the closer I looked at it. And that's how it goes, folks. 10 to one on the three. I rod, not really expected. So we move on. Let's see. Let's see who somebody have had this. Uh Pratty Yadish Patti. Hey Patty, uh Pratty Prad Yanish. Thanks for joining us. Good luck today. You went with the six, and thanks for sharing your selection there with us. I went eight over one, three, six. I dropped the two out. Didn't use my three on top. Jeez. Had so much speed and so much class. I can't believe it went off at 12 to 1. I should have put a side wager on that instead just to get the job done. Who else? And I talked, if you were watching I, earlier when I was breaking down the horses, I was talking about it. Richard was on the three also. Jeez. The knock on the eight, I started to get a little edgy about it because it had been running at five, and here we were asking for five and a half. Once again, Emma Jane Wilson did nothing on a horse that had been showing speed and had first and second at Woodbine, and uh, that's, that's – I'm just not seeing three, three, two, you know, three, two here in the plays. Three, two, Jamie had it. Great job, Jamie. Three, two, get ready. Jamie, great call, Jamie. Tremendous. And I'll tell you what this is going to pay, too. This is going to be a good exact. Probably the best exact of the day. That's a $128 exact. Great job, Jamie. Jamie. And the four did slip into third. Eight. Look at that eight. What a door. I should have just stuck with my three eight and put together the damn pick three or a double. Now, I think I let the board sway me there. 
what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do. You know, I'm solid with my picks, but I'm human. Once in a while, I got to catch myself. I just caught myself back here. I think the board was, I was getting too caught up in the hype of the eight. <clears throat> Masood, hey Masood, why would it be so high? Yeah, that's the thing. What the what, what they do with the morning lines is the line maker. They make who they think the public is. They make the line of what they're supposed to do is make the line as close to what they think the public is going to bet. It's not that they think the horse is going to win. They they make the line based on what they think the public is going to bet, is going to bet on. So you don't want to get sprayed by the morning line. And when I handicap the races early in the morning before when I'm prepping for the shows is um, I don't look at the morning line when I handicap, go through the card the first time. I look at it after the, I handicap the race and I'll be like, wow, like in this case, why is the three so high? Or, you know, and um, you don't want to get swayed by the line. And I got swayed when I looked at it and I saw it kept going down and then I got looked at the eight and I said, yeah, it keeps getting better and better. And the money was on it. And I was like, yeah, why should I have to use eight and three on top? Now, granted, I wouldn't have the two underneath. But if I was playing a, a, a pick three, I would have got hosed. And then I would have went eight and three <clears throat> on top, just too deep here. But I wouldn't have used, I don't think. Yeah, so that's how they make the morning line. Uh, let's see. They they go by what the, they think the public's going to bet on. Joshua, terrible. Three was the, the Brisnet uh, power play. Was it? Did, did it have the highest Brisnet? I mean, but, yeah, look at those. Richard, look at the Brisnet pace figures for the first, second call. That That's why I like the three. And if you look at it, 98, 94, 96, 102, 96, 95, especially putting up those early and second call uh, pace figures in a race that's turning all the way back to five and a half. So I say, you know, if I could run that pace figure at a mile and a 16th and it was getting Lasix for the first time, why can't it do it? Um, at least carry it for five furlongs. You're not asking for a mile and 16th. And yes, it had the highest Brisnet power ranking there. What was the opening odds? What did the line maker make it? 10 to 1. And that's about, and the line maker was right because that's about what the public made it. But I think part of the reason the public made it that is because the odds make, they look at the opening odds and then they wind up mirroring who the people, who the odds maker plays. So we're on to race seven. I used all but three for my Zud. Mesu. Alusoy. There's always another race. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it get you down. It's going to be all right. There's always another race. And I, that was not an easy race. It's, you know, they, they, things could have went a different way. Right. I, 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 I threw it. I didn't play a pick three instead of or a daily double. And I would have been probably a sure thing to get this done here if I did. OK, Richard. Yes. Um, those. Who else? Uncoupled entry ran one, two. Oh, the two. Look at that. And that, and that was this, probably one of, you know, aside from Pletcher, that was the trainer that had the percentages going for it. Wonderful. All right. Now we move on. Now we move on to the final three races of the day. Let's get it done here. We can close this, close the book on this race. Thank you know, I get over one three six. Could have been worse. You know, I could have been, you know, one eight three eight over one three six, and I wouldn't have 
even though I liked it too early on, I would have would have used somebody else. Because I looked, I looked at the two. I, you know what it was? I just looked at the speed figures of the of the two, and they just looked. The race speeds did really didn't stand out. They were slower than the others. I. It's not, it, it it runs convenient trips. That's what it is. Okay, you know we move on to race seven. Good, great job, those. Those of you who had it last race, I announced the winner of one. Let's see, race seven, we, we stay on the Tapita. One and a 16th mile, purse 32K, okay, for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and upwards, which have started for a claiming price of 12.5 or less since February 23rd. Uh, Non-winners of a race at a mile or over since in three months get two extra pounds. All right. We're down a little bit. We, you know, one race can turn it around. You know, we don't go crazy. We're not chasing money. You know, we're battling, bat battling. It's that kind of card today. We're going to be at Oakland for the Rebel Stakes on Saturday. 12 races. Rebel Stakes is a huge derby prep race, a G1. And we have another race that's a G3 in there. And yet a third stakes race out of 12. That's Saturday. But we still have three races to go here and we're going to be back at Gulfstream tomorrow for the Friday card. Yeah. Friday. It's almost here. You can see it, see it on the horizon, distant horizon, but we got three races to go. And as the saying goes in horse racing, there's always another race. What about one? This looks like a two horse race. I mean, this one, I think you just bet four, six and then move on. Who are the, the only good thing about this, some longer ones, I think, have a shot to sneak into the try, both the one and the three. Now, who's been winning this type of race? Uh, all of them are winning over 20%. There's no real post position that has an edge. Maybe post four to seven, which might slant things slightly towards the six. Why is number two, two to one? Am I seen correctly in this? Mosler's image, two to one? What's going on here? What is this? Hang on a second. <laughs> if two wins this race, Irod is a magician. Should never open two to one, uh, five to two. I don't even like it for third. Pace of this race, we'll look at the pace figure real quick. Seven. I think three is going to show some speed and probably lead the way for a while. And that's a 20 to one called Streaking Gray. Well, it sounds like a gray horse. And the other, and so maybe it gets the lead and hangs on for third, okay? Two, Mosler's image. This is one that likes to be close. He's not going to be close today. He's not going to be close to the lead. I don't understand this. Uh, numbers raced. There was no faster, and this is who doesn't really even have a a record okay. one is just as good as two so what it comes down to is this now Paul Mosler's image yeah he's he's usually around I mean look at look at four Second, first, 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 second, first, second. And the six, they faced each other. First, second, first, second, first, first. Can the six beat the four? That's where it is. <clears throat> You've got to try and find something and edge out of these two. I can actually see... 
The six beating the four. And I'm going to land on that one. Who's on the four? Paco Lopez. Just look at the early speed. They're probably about the same, folks. I'm going to – just based on the last two races, I think six is in a little bit better form. And it gets the regular jockey, you know, Paco Lopez. He'll send this one a little bit. I think he's going to get the four in trouble. I like that Reyes has been riding the six all. So this is going to be the seventh straight time for Reyes. Paco rode this one. Let's go. Let's put six on top. And six over one. Three, four. That's my trick. Try six over one, three, four, one, three, four. I'm not going to go crazy with this. And six is, wow, six is favored. I, I thought six was the second choice. Who are the trainers here? Um, we're gonna. This is gonna come down to trainers and workouts. We're gonna look a little closer here. Paco Lopez, Ronald Spatz. He's a 16% trainer. 14 at Gulfstream. Paco, his percentage is dropping like a stone. He's going to 14%. Let's look at the six. Bobby DeBona, 18%. Lionel and the boner together, 25%. I don't land on the six. I I think the six. I think the, I think the six is is better than the four. Synthetic, this trainer is 14%. Looking for some reason to dismiss these two, one of these two. This is a mile and 16th. So I'm going to go down now, seven minutes to post. I just want to see their records at this distance. A four, four, seven, and three seconds. The six is six for 13 with five seconds. I'm actually going to go. I'm actually going to move over to the four here. I just like his winning percentages. First, second at, the, at this distance. Now, he was, he did beat the six two back. And he's been, and he finished second by one to the, the other one uh, yesterday by a line. But he's going off the favorite all the time. And six once was. Works. Four is a closer, six is a presser. I mean, it's looking here. Let's go four. Let's go four here. I'm, I'm going to land on four. I mean, six has been. I'm going to land on four. I just like the numbers. I think it's more likely to come back and run a good one. I think it sets up for him a little bit more. And let me put it in the play, and then let's uh, four of a one three six.
hopefully we can we can slip a bomb into second. Let's put a small one in there, six, four, one, Kentucky Pride. All right. Let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Answer the questions. <coughs> Who are our picks? I got exact uh, try, trifecta. Four over one, three, six over one, three, six. And try straight six four one. All right. I like that the three has speed. I like that the one is running very early speed. I like that the one is very consistent, as consistent as they come. It's not as fast as the others. It has one at a mile 73 back here. It uh, doesn't shame itself. It's last race on, on turf. Gets uh, Jorge Ruiz up. Nothing to talk about. 6% here, 15%. Going back his last 430 or so starts. A weak trainer, six out of 121. Uh, Richard Silvestri. We go down to the three. 16% trainer here, Eduardo Castro, out of 32 races. Gets Junior Alvarado up. So I haven't, you know, he had, does have a race. You go back to June of last year that fits where he did win at a mile 70 here. So who else? Gulfstream, four. I like four also. Four, five, six, eight, 11, four, six, eight, 11. I got the, all four of those that I like in that in that next race. Uh, awesome. Good luck, Austin. Uh, six, four, five. Good luck, Keith. Over six, four, five, two. two. All right. Gene, four, six, five. Good luck, Gene. I see some of you are mentioning five. We'll talk about five for a second. All right, has been on the improve, running on turf. It's the Peter race with his three-year-old. Early, he has a three-year-old. Not much to talk about, but it's been improving. Another move forward, gets the jock, Tyler Gaffleon. Maybe gets itself a little closer to grab a slice. I did. I just think four and six, almost a lock to finish one, two this race. It's what are they? What is that even going to pay? You're talking about a you know four dollar, four dollar exacta here. I mean, you know, four to one odds on on these exactas. I mean, you box them, it's probably the easiest money you make of all time. It's, but then you got to depend on these to, these two to get it done. Uh, six, seven, Richard. All right, good luck, Richard. What about this seven? I prefer others. I, I would like the one, but I'll tell you what, you know, the third, it's, 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 it's going to be a scramble for that third spot. And seven certainly has a shot at the third spot. What are the odds on the seven and the five? 21 to one. Okay, you're getting a price there on that seven. Good. Who else? Boris, uh, four journeymen taking the evens. I, I think so. I like the four here. Also best, uh, Boris. Good luck, Boris. Uh, money, six, nine to four. Six, nine to four. Wow, it's come down that low. Holy cow, Peter Jaworski, good to see you. Why are they entering her in this? Sometimes they, you know, enter some of these riders or these horses as a spectacle, like Rich Strike in the Dubai World Cup. 
oh, you know, you get the Derby winner, last year's Kentucky Derby winner in the race when it has no chance at all. And then she's going to ride there. Thanks for the news there. Run tomorrow in Saudi. Thanks very much, Peter. The Saudi Cup. Do we do a show covering the Saudi Cup? No, because I haven't been following the horses there. I'm not going to do a show on the horses I know nothing about. We're here to give out winners. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you winners, contenders, picks, and plays. Go through the races all in advance. Let's get it done here. We got the late pick three going. I think you can safe, safely pick. You know, let's see. Who else do we got here? Thanks for that update, Peter. She So she is riding. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, Gulfstream, they're actually getting in. Now I got my play in. Who else? Boris 2, Mosler's image is 8-1 to one in the UNK. I, I don't see that one at all. Uh, is four journeyman going to reverse form? Good luck. Who else? Picks. I'm looking for picks. Keeneland, that's what I'm looking for. After, yeah, Keeneland, after going to Keeneland, Verdine, that is going to be a lot of fun. So I got my play here, you know, four over 136, 136, try. Uh, Chris Burton, good luck, Chris, six big things. Ten on five to win, Christopher. Good luck, Christopher. Five one, you'll get paid if this comes in, Christopher. Uh, this is, yeah, I four six blue smoker box four six. I would do if I had to make sure money didn't want to mess around and you know everything depended on it. Four six make a slight profit. Look out the one. I think the one has a shot, if anyone, uh, to sneak into third. Uh, good luck, um, Christopher. TH four six. Uh, good luck, uh, TH. Uh, Gene, six four five box. Good luck, Gene and Richard, six seven over four five. I think we got everyone covered here, folks. Yeah, and some uh, Gene, sometime more picks. I'm not a pick six player. I'll give out my selections, but I haven't played it. I haven't played this for five in a while either. Pick four, yes. When I see something good, yes. Good luck, Gene. Good luck, everybody. Who else? Uh, getting in the gate. Get it done, Paco. Look out for the one. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. They're getting in. And they're in the gate. Oh, wow. The four is down. Now I got six over one three, no, four over one three six, one three six in a try, and just a straight try. That'll be in order. Six followed by four, followed by one. And uh good luck, everybody. Enjoy the race. Riders off somebody. Come on, guys. Quit horsing around. And they're waiting. We're waiting for you. Ice water in the veins. Enjoy the race. Win, lose. Not play at all. Same emotion. Uh, now, three is showing absolutely no speed, which I depended upon in my play. Who's the jockey on the three? Junior Alvarado. He rode that seven horse in the open like crap. <coughs> For me, which looked like one of this very solid pick. All right, but we still got six to root for. We still got the one to root for. I'm not worried about the damn three. We just decided to take this race off. Uh, Richard, seven showing the way. And look at this, and five coming here. Where is four and six? If they even if it's early yet, I'd be shocked if they don't finish one, two in this race. If they don't win either four or six, I'll tell you what. How fast are these fractions? Not overly quick. Four is the closer in here, so I semi-expected this. Uh, four is uh, six is starting to roll. Five is starting to roll. Now, I'm not playing games anymore, folks. Um, four is coming. Uh, so is six. 
Um, but nobody else is. The five is hanging around at a at a good at a decent price here. Now four overhauls the six. Look at the five fight on. All right. Wow. Four to five. Couldn't get any of the long ones home. And we move on to race number eight. I four. What are the five odds? Wow. Can we can can we get any? This is as easy a race to call. What is four six? Not even two to one odds on that, folks. Just under two to one odds, which is still okay. I mean. I'm surprised the five. How did the five even take any money at all? All right, was on the improve social engagement. Get Tyler Gaffley on for Brendan Walsh. No complaints. I mean, all the chalks came, pretty much came in. Jacole, how's it going? Four six. All right. 70, uh, you're in good shape here. I think you're going to get this done. Good to see you, Jacole. Good luck. Good luck. Let's get this pick three. Good to see you today. Uh, getting a get, get Paco. Yeah, I, I, Chris. I thought the one would get make a showing too there, Christopher. Um, had a little fun with it. Good job there, AC. Got it done. Uh, who else? Got it done, right? Be, be pay you. No bank's going to pay that interest. Austin, excellent job. Excellent job. Got the single done. And now you can have start having some fun in the next, next race. And both races are races to have a little fun with. Uh, Gene, excellent. Good job, Gene. What bank is going to pay you that? Uh, okay, who else? I'll tell you what, Richard, that seven was showing the way there for a while. They crushed that four late. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Boris the Blade is coming on as we head towards home. So you're going to have a winning day today, uh, Boris. You know, barring, you know, you play this right. So great job, Boris. I know you were down a little early. I'm still down a little and I just need one. I don't need a big hit. Just uh, not even a medium. Just an average. Just uh, a decent hit. A decent hit. A ten to one shot or something. A ten to one uh, play. That'll anything over that'll put me in there. And Jennifer is in the house, stopping in for a second. Like the chances of a couple of bombs in the eighth. One and nine. I don't have either of them, Jennifer. I'm going to write them down. And thanks for sharing those with us, and we will take a look. And Jennifer has had some good here on the show. Thanks, Jennifer. Good to see you. Good luck if you are indeed playing these. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. All right. Who else? I'm going to be doing Oak Lawn on um, Saturday. Not Oak Lawn Saturday, Jennifer. Everybody here for the Rebel Stakes, 12 races, the entire card. Uh, the Rebel Stakes, a big Kentucky Derby prep race, and uh, with a G1, a G3, and also another graded stakes. Four, six, exact to Timothy. Yes, let's break out the balloons and champagne. Tremendous. Good job, uh, Timothy. <clears throat> Beats losing, and you get over, you get, um, hey, almost double your money. Boris the Blade, nice to see you. Boris, Boris is the Blade. Nicole gets it done. <coughs> Jennifer's tip. I'll be right back. I'm going to eat the puppy. I got to put this away, make a quick stop. We'll get it done here in the down to the last two. All right. We'll be right back.
Okay, we're on to the last race, folks. I'm going to finish down a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to come back. I got to hit one of the next two races. Otherwise, I got to choke it up to I'm not down much. One race turns it around and not a big race, just a, an average size hit. But uh, not every day is going to be a winner, but we'll do the best we can. And yeah, there's always another race. We actually have two. And Boris has rallied. He's come on strong late, actually mid to late. And who do we got here? Let's see. Uh, Boris, I'm having a nice weekend. Weekend. I'm having a great weekend. All right. Great job, Bob uh, Boris. Jennifer, uh, eight, win, place, show. Wow, I have eight as one of my contenders, but we'll take a look at it. We'll look, I'll look talk about these. I The four I'm on here are four, six, eight, and 11. So... <clears throat> Now, 1-9, okay, race 8, win, place, show, 1-9, exact of 4-5, 1-4-5-9. So you got it covered. I like the coverage there, uh, Jennifer. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Have a great evening. Enjoy. Thanks for sharing. Uh, good to see you, and thanks for sharing those uh, long ones here. Th those are the ones everyone loves. Thank you very much. Go get them. Be will. Boris, I ride this on another favorite in the eight. Oh, brother. I like the 11. 11. We have two. Cajun Dream. 11. I, 11 is one of the ones I'm looking at. Um, okay, let's, let's, let me catch up here on who we have. We have 13 minutes to post. Gene. I need a winner in race eight. New Jersey bets gives us a $10 bet. And if we don't win, but come in second or third, get our money back. So pick me a winner. I'll do my best, Gene, and everybody else do your best as well. And here's Amadeo. Amadeo is in the house. He's been a big hitter on the heavy hitter on the show. Thank you. Gulfstream, exact the box seven. Wow, that's one I don't have either. Over two, five, eight, eleven, seven. Uh, to win place, hold on to the tail. That's it. Good luck, and thank you for sharing that. Everybody, Amadeo and everyone who's sharing your picks. Jennifer came in here with some long ones. Scroll back to check Jennifer's selections, everyone's selections. Boris has been hot. We've had other winners on here uh, with some tremendous hits. And I want to give credit always when credit is due. Um And I want to mention a lot of people here, so I just want to take a second to check back here on the uh, on some of these selections. I'll give it a minute, but I know there. Chris Atkins, yes, Chris has come in and delivered like the eight seven exact the box, which was a big one back. So look that up. It's a few races back. So great job, Chris. Everybody, let's get it done here. Race a, race eight. Let's talk about it first. Okay, now this is okay. Yeah, this is a doozy. Seven furlongs. It's on dirt. Cajun, um, seven furlongs allowance fifty four k for state bred three year olds, which have never won a race other than a maiden claiming or starter, which have never won two races. Wow, a lot of them getting Lasix for the first time. Okay. So I'm going to drop down to the one that I like best. Well, let's see what type has been winning this race. We've got a lot of entries here. This is a tough race. But I think we can get this done. At this meet, there have been 204 races like this that meet – this ice water up here. We're done with the coffee. Uh, coffee. Um, early speed to early pressing types are getting it done. Thirty-nine to thirty-five percent. Um, all the posts are winning close to each other, so it's going to boil down to who's the best one in here. I really like the four. Roll on Big Joe. Now he. I'm going to look at the pace real quick. 
go to some pace notes. A lot of them can vie for the lead. Now, roll on Big Joe. He has early speed, yeah. And he showed it at this track at a mile. So I think the distance is not a problem turning back. And might show some, he, he, he has showed even more speed going shorter, especially at five and a half at Del Mar four back. He's a front runner, okay? And now I'm going to talk a little bit more about him. Roll on Big Joe, number four. He has the fourth highest prime power ranking from Brisnet, and that's just a, based on their whole body of work. It's not track or surface specific or distance specific. It's just takes it's computer generated. It's just something you could look at to get a glance at who's been performing over the course of their career. But you want to go further. And what I get it, what I get about the four is. <laughs> He opened six to one. That surprises me a bit. Keeps getting better. And one last race by 14 lengths. Optional claim for Robert Hess Jr. And Robert, the trainer, he's 13% here, 14% uh, at Gulfstream, gets Gaff Leone up. He was 17%. I just want to see if he wrote, if he wrote him before. I just want to see. That's high as last time. So he gets Gaffney on for the first time. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Keeps getting better. And I figure this one's going to be involved. Okay. Early inside post. Has the running style that works. Comes off a blowout. On January 22nd, um, has worked since then. Not really a quick work. Fifth to five, 103 for five furlongs. Maybe they didn't want to push it, but it just showed early. Uh, look at those Grisnet uh, early and middle pace figures. I mean, it runs those pace figures today and Everyone will probably just be watching, watching them go, right? And the other one I landed on was six. Bring the bread home. Now, this is coming off the layoff, so I may move in a different direction off this one. Uh, bring the bread home. Mark Cassie did win by. Um, oh, Saratoga last July. Getting laces today. Just a little closer at this one. Does have big early speed. I mean, he's going to be part of this workout 7th of 37, 20th of 45. A bullet first of 559. No doubt this one has speed. What about the 90? What about all oh, the layoff? Hasn't run since July. Mark Cassie. Uh, he gets it done when it hasn't raced in over 90 days. And I think I'm going to shy off that one a little bit. I think others are going to beat it to the punch. <clears throat> Let's drift down to the favorite. Eight does have a good race at Aqueduct at seven furlongs in its first race where it won by four. That was in October and January. Here it got whipped, set pace, and then faltered. Let me just look at the pace. How does this work? There's another one, a lot of pace, folks. I think you got to respect it a bit. Fletcher and my rod and that first race at the distance not that great, but I wasn't happy with the second race. I 
big pace, though. Has back-to-back bullets. I think he got to be respected. His first race at the distance. Now we're going to go down to number 11. Now it's not getting LASIK. It does have the highest prisonet ranking, okay? The four is not getting LASIK either. The six is. Now let's go down to the 11. I still like four best. Number 11. Apocalypso, how many minutes to post? Let's make sure we've got enough time to get to everybody. Four minutes, yeah, okay. I got to go against. I, I, all right, it's running. Safi Joseph Jr. It's, well, this has been faster. I, I, it, it hasn't been here. It did win here once. I know if it's one of the best. Um, this did show giant speed the last time it was. Oh, God, it does have big speed. This is going to be, uh, it did show a lot of speed here. And it's coming out of some big company. What happened last race at Tampa? Bumped at the break. No speed that race. A golf stream, stream, this one has big speed. All right. I think I'm going to go 11 4. Let's look at the odds and, let, and we'll land on somebody here. Let's see what kind of odds we're getting. 4, 7 to 2, 11, 8 to 1. 8, 8 shouldn't be 6 5. I know it's Pletcher and Ortiz. It shouldn't be 6 5. Uh, What about the one Cajun dream? Now, this, they talked about this one. Um, Jennifer gave this selection. We're going to look at the one and the nine Cajun dream. I like its race two back. And it does have speed. I... I think I prefer it for second. It is getting Lasix. Trainer Michael Yates, he's 13% here and gets uh, Jesus Rios up together the 13%. Definitely has speed in the rail and you're getting a big price. I got a contender. I, for example, I could see it beating the 11 based on the race two back. And the, what about the nine? Nine, I'm not impressed with, but I, I think that I think the one is the one. Nine, I would really have to jump up. I mean, it's second race at the distance. Yeah, uh, I think it's in the deep end of the pool today. But I do like the eleven somewhat, uh, the one somewhat. I, I like the four. And let me put in my pick, and then we're gonna we're gonna open it up. Race eight. It's a tough race. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to look at one more thing. I just want to check the six for a second.
I got four over 111, and the other one, just want to check one more thing. All right, we're in. Exacta. They say Exacta four eleven over one four eleven. I'm going with Jennifer's play in here and keep it on what they may. All right, who else? Grandma Horse Racing. Hey, how's it going, Grandma Horse Racing? Thank you so much for the super chat for Al's Coffee Fund. Good luck very much, Grandma Horse Racing. Much appreciated. Good luck today. Thank you very much. All right, we down to the last two. Who else? We catch up on the <clears throat> on the picks here. Thank you very much, Grandma Horse Racing. Good luck today. I hope you I hope you're winning some money, and um, much appreciated. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, who else? <clears throat> Only problem with six last race at Saratoga. Yeah, that, that's what I'm looking at, uh, Gene. Uh, Rich, 8 over 411. Okay. Rich, 4 over 568. Uh, good luck, Rich. Gene, 16114. Winner is coming from. I, I, yeah, I got three of those there. Good luck, Gene. Uh, they're getting in the gate. Who else? Richard, uh, 611, 45611. Good luck, Richard. Uh, Rich Lane, 8 over 245. Blue Smoke, uh, come on, man. Good luck, Blue Smoker. That great pick earlier, 16411. Who else? Race 8, 7 over 258. Good luck, everybody. I think four is the one to beat, but we'll see Jennifer, uh, four, five, over one, four, five, nine. And, of course, she has the one and the nine. Jennifer, good luck, Jennifer, wherever you are. Who else? They're getting in six to Mac Attack. Hey, Mac Atkin, good to see you. Good luck on your six. Yeah, that was one of my contenders. Um, four, 11, one, four, 11. We got a lot of speed signed on here. Uh, who else? Grandma Horse Racing again. Thank you very much. Good luck here. And they're off. And four is showing speed as expected. Uh, six is trying to run with him. And I, I'd be surprised if he can. Uh, where is the one? One is all the way in the back. So four gets some distance. I need the 11 to start moving, really, if, if he wants to do anything here. Didn't show the speed I expected from him, but the six isn't going away. Where's one? One, where are you? Here comes eight. Eleven seems to be losing ground. Five is running. Four turns for home in front. Where is one? Where is eleven? <clears throat> Four is making it look easy. And here comes two. Come on, 11. Turn on the Jets, baby. Come on, four. Two, four. 50 to one. Oh, brother. Don't you love this? <clears throat>
before didn't even win. I didn't have to worry. But I thought that that was the 11. That would have been terrible if the 11 overhauled them. You got 11 showed no speed. How is the two? Oh, brother. What a race. I lost. I'm going to finish this day down. And uh, I don't see me recouping uh, in the last race. And with what the ones that I like on top look like, they're probably going to be chalk. Am I going to try and drill it? No. Maybe I'll try a little something. But <clears throat> unless I get a hit here where I get uh, I get a return of, for, you know, for my exact play of, of 15 to one or better. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it here today, folks. And it's, but we'll do the best we can. Uh, Boris 80 to one winner on the UK exchange. Let me just look at that one. How did, how, let's look at this two for a second. Open 15 to one. Kevin Krigger. He's ridden this one all three times, and he wrote it again. And he had the second worst prison at power ranking. But that's computer generated. Look at this one. I, I, I don't see it. <clears throat> It was on the improve. The trainer, though, Edward Plisa Jr., 18% with Kevin Krieger. Krieger, 10% here. I remember when he made waves of the Kentucky Jeremy Jock. 13, 15, 20. Did get Lasix for the first time. Had to improve, bottom line. Was not really that far from removed from from the eights last race, really. At the sprint distance, <laughs> and he beat him. I just liked others better. You're not not far removed from the five. I mean, what he needed here was for some of the others not to fire, and that's exactly what happened. And as much as I like before, I was not going to get this to practice with the two getting in there. Let's see. Does anybody have this? Now let's go back and look. Eugene, I gave the best explanation I could. I think the others had to take a step back. And this one... Had to keep moving forward, and uh, I guess the four ran out of gas. I same jockey on it three times in a row. When you look back, you could usually find something about everybody that wins. Very rarely, all I can say to answer your question is very rarely does a horse in a race have no redeeming qualities at all. Otherwise, they wouldn't be entered in it. And um, Lo and behold, you look back, it's been improving every race. It got the same jockey every race. It got Lasix. It improved again. The others didn't run its best race. Open 15 to 1. And so they didn't think it was impossible. But I wouldn't have picked it, and I wouldn't pick it again. Plain and simple. Who else? How'd that 6 do, Gene? I didn't see that there. A bunch of you are on the six. Mac. <clears throat> Mac, dangerous player. I had the first big winner on the show that I when I first started the show on the very first show on Mountaineer one night, gave out a long shot. That four horse. So you're demanding everyone play it, and it came in at a big price. Jeez. Yeah, a lot of people, good players on the six. Gene was on the six. Right on it. Like a radar. Radar beam, right? Rich. Look good there. Head and follow him, Rich. I don't know what happened. Uh, 
11 showed no speed. 11 showed no speed at all out of the gate. Very big surprise. I don't know what to say about it. I, I'm, I'm not seeing anybody with two. Who came in? Eight. There's Irod again. What was that for? Six to five? Irod on a three to two. But to Irod's defense, eight wasn't the a deserving favorite. I, I didn't use it. I didn't like it to win. So I can't say he screwed everybody over by came in. I think he did. Oh, he came in fourth. I think the six and the four were better than two, four, eight. I thought, I don't know about the two, but I definitely thought multiple horses not were better than the eight. So I can't say he really screwed everybody over at three to two. People made him three to two. A lot of the players here were not on I ride this race. I think most of us were, were against him. All right. I, I don't see anybody with 2 8. Hang on a sec. Okay. Okay. Yeah, nobody had this. Look at this. I had the first bet of eight over two, four, five. So do you have this, Rich? This would be wild. Uh, let me see, eight over, that looks like eight over two, five. So to, does that mean you have eight, all four of them box? I see the slash after the eight. Let me just look. I, I, I've got to go back for Rich here. For if you had that somehow, I'm reading this as eight over two five exact box or two four five over eight. So if you did hit it, great job, Rich. Um, if it was an exact a box, I would think you'd have commas there, unless that was a typo. I don't know. But either way, great job getting the two in there, Rich. I hope you had the exacta. That would be some good news. I, Mizzoot, great job on that two. I don't know. I had two, four, six. Do you have this box, Mizzoot? I'm going back. I like to go back and see, you know, you know, I'll check where I can. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of comments here, so I'm doing the best I can. But if somebody says they hit, especially one like this, I'll double check it. Now, I don't see any entry of 246. But, and I will say but. I had two, four, six. If you did hit this, exact the box. Okay, so you're giving us the winner now, Mezut, but you're giving us the winner after the race. I don't see the two, four, six in advance, but if you did hit it, great job. Great job. Because sometimes we have players that come in here and they give out winners after the race and they always have it, no matter how long they are. But So you're giving it to us here. So... Great job. If you did, okay, good, good job. All right. Who else? We got one race left here. Now we have race nine. One in the 16th mile on turf, made an optional claim, 50K purse, no scratches, uh, purse 50,000, or maiden Philly three-year-olds and Florida bred or maiden claiming. Price 50,000, weight 100 to 18, claiming price 50. Okay, let's do it. We're on turf for the last race. 
and we have uh, nine entries. We do have a firster in here, number nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine. I want to thank everybody for being here today. And uh, let's get it done here in the last race. If you've enjoyed this show and you want to see more shows like it going forward, there's a the thumb, click on the thumbs up and also the subscribe. You see a subscribe button right there. And uh, thanks. But we in any last race. So now we do move on. And I'm on six seven. I'm torn between the two of them. How is it? How can that be? Well, we will look, and I will tell you what I see. Let's see. Correction didn't hit. Apology. Well, you great job, Rich, with the uh, let's catch up and then move on. Didn't hit. Apologies. All right. Let's see. Yes. I did hit it. Sorry. No need to apologize. Great hit, Mizzoot. Great hit, Mizzoot. That is a tremendous hit. And I'll tell you what, you had the four in there and threw the two in. Excellent job. You got paid, my friend. Thanks for being here today. Great job. All right. So we get some happy news here. And now we move on to race nine. 12 minutes to post. And what do we see here? Can we get anything done? I... First thing I'm going to do now, this is this is an on turf, one and a sixteenth mile. Who has been winning this type of race? Now, I imagine this. This type of race, yeah, we have 47 by 47 races like this, eight and a half furlongs. Running type, rail, it really boils down to the best horse in here. Uh, no real re uh, post position edge, no real running style edge. They're all winning uh, around in the mid 20%, 20, between 23 and 28%. So it's going to come down to the horses. And I'm going to start by looking at the pace scenario. Eight has early speed and gets Julian Leperu up and switches, goes from five and a half furlongs over to the Tapita. I guess Saez must be in, 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 in for, for the Saudi Cup or something because he's not here today. I can't believe Chantel is riding over there, but I can understand if Luis Saez is right. I'm going to have to take a look at the Tapita for the Saudi Cup for a second there, see if I can find any data. All right. The pace really, I don't like the three that much. I know it has a little early speed. I don't like the jock. I'm going to try to beat that one. Not even then. Chris Engelhart, Mr. Finger Lakes, the Engelharts are heavy duty Finger Lakes uh, trainers. 14% here out of 112 races. Only a 1.13 ROI. He's teamed up with Sean. Uh, Bridge Mahan together the nine percent. So, is the three favorite? Geez, I hope not. I'm not looking at the board. I'm gonna go down to number six with Christopher David, who is winning at a very high clip, and he gets I rod, and they're not favored. I like six connecting flight, Weaver and Castellano. Let me just look when there's three. Three comes out of the same race, different race, than the sixth, than the, than the sixth. I, I got to go our rod here. This time I got to go our rod. No worse than place. For a trainer that's winning like mad, I, I wouldn't be surprised if six is favored.
Now this eight is stretching out, and is I know it's a bit of a price. It's Julian Leperu, eight percent. Julian and Cherie Duval are 0 for 12 together. But this one is going synthetic, five and a half, stretching out to a mile and a sixteenth. Synth to turf, Cherie is 0 for 3. Route, she's 15%. First time turf, she wins 17%. I just like the early pace itch. Do I think eight's going to win? I don't know. The other one I like a bit is number seven. Connecting flight to Castellano. Mid-pack, it got stuck running wide. Uh, drifted out. Bumped. I could see seven underneath. But what about the five? Mark Cassie, Jose Ortiz. Going to have to lay off horse. Eh, I'm not really crazy about it. I think it goes through six, seven, eight. Let's let's look at the board and see what's going on there. Cassie's been slipping a bit lately. Six is nine to five. Look at that. Winds up being favored, right? Uh, the eight. I kind of like the seven a little bit. Maybe six over seven, eight. Anybody else? I'm going to open it up. I, I'm not going to. What I got to do here, okay, to finish ahead for the day. Now, this would be the move. I'd have to go an exact of seven, eight over six with the two longer ones. Oh, let me just see what these pay. Or I double up with these six on top of seven, eight, and uh, <laughs> turn it into a better payout. Hey, that's not bad. I can do this with six over seven, eight. What about the two taking this money? Let's think about this. Seven, eight, definitely. What about two? Pools. Let's look at the pools. We got six minutes to post. I'm going to check the pools in a second. Six is taking all the money in the... Uh, Actually, five is taking a lot of money, too. With Jose Ortiz, acquired taste. Uh, that's for Mark Cassie, who is 15% here in over 2,300 races at Gulfstream. Jose Ortiz at 19%. Together, Cassie, he's a solid turf trainer. Of course, this one's coming from Woodbine. Mm, bump me a fall on eight. It's in a stretch out, big stretch out. Let's see how this five closes. Let's take a look at the five. Um, what about two? Ah, final race. I don't like the two. I know I had some trouble. I still don't like it. I, it, 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 it too slow. Um, we're at the nine. All right, let's open it up. Let's see what everybody has. I think I, I, I'm in good shape here. I think I know what I'm going to do. I think we could do this. Um, What about the three? What? How come the three? Okay, three's dead on the board. I like it at six to one. I hated it at 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 at, at as as a favorite. Now oh, six is really crushing it. What if we box three seven eight? Oh, that would be the ultimate. Um, we beat Irod Ortiz here. Can we do this now? Now the wheels are spinning. Uh, okay, six. How does six figure here? It's a closer, but it really doesn't show any real closing kick. 
Um, I think we can, I think we are going to actually use the three here at a price. Okay. Um, three, six, eight over three, six, seven, eight. Exactly. Let's do it. Let's do it like that. <clears throat> Open the door for some balloons here. And let's see, exacta. Nicholas, good luck. Nicholas, in place number two. Wow. Race. Now yeah, let's do this. Race nine. We're not greedy. We'll just go a little up. Let's do it this way. We're looking for the bigger payout on top. Okay. Reverse exact, folks. Seven. Let me look at the odds. I just want to see the closing figures of the uh, eight. Okay. All right, let's do it. Exacta. That's an exacta, folks. We give you the exact players here. Three, six, and I like the three if it's at that price, which has a little bit of speed. Hopefully it stays up there. All right, one minute to post. Let me just do this. Let me get my play in now. Look at you get your picks in here. Everybody's on. All righty. Who do we got? Six, eight, exacta. All right. Good luck, TH. All right. Three, six, seven, three, six, seven, eight, seven, golf to show, 180. I think you should get, you have a good shot to get this, Frankie. Come on, man. Nicholas, 258, box 24. Good luck, Nicholas. Uh, one, two, three, four. All right, you get paid, Richard. That two is taking some money, and I'll tell you what, that three is a player. I didn't like it as a player, as a favorite, but at six to one, I love it. Uh, six, five, two, Gene, good luck. 
Okay. Two, three, eight, exact a box, Gulf Stream. Good luck. So I'll give you, give us any picks here. I'll give you the winner. Good luck, Mac. Good to see you. Let's see who else. Mac, number one or number four, you choose to win. Wow. Let's take a look at these one and four. What about the one? I know. Um, Richard taught you using the one. One got it. I'll tell you what. The one did run a race. <clears throat> its first race on dirt. <coughs> if it can take that race and switch it over to a route and the same type of speed at a route distance and going over to turf. It's a contender. I don't know what kind of odds. The last turf race I'm not crazy about. What about the four? The four stuck in Malibu does have fast races on the Tapita. And he will be running early. He does come out of Stakes Company. You know that four is a player here. Angel Morales does have a win today. Patrick B Bianconi is 13% here at um, Gulf Stream, covering nine over 900 races. Never teamed up with Angel Morales, who's a 13% shock. The turf race, I don't like. Uh, but it got bumped around a bit, got a little bit of a hassle, uh, hassle in that race. Gets blinkers off here. And when Bianconi takes the blinkers off, he's 10%. But it's those three Tapita races at a mile and a 70 and one of today's distance that have me a bit intrigued about the four at a nice price. So good luck, everybody. Now, six is on the board at nine to five. And I got three, six, seven over three, six, seven, eight. You know, a nice pick, a nice hit here. If you can get maybe even with the favorite on top, I'll be able to finish almost even, probably a little bit ahead. If I can get the favorite out of there and get the other two in there, I'm going to fin actually finish ahead without going crazy here. And it's going to be a fun day either way, win or lose. No one's getting that, that's how I play. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy and, and, you know, go, you know, start depositing money or chasing losses or throwing winnings. Getting in the gate, bring it home. I rod six, let, uh, litigate. Yeah. Uh, literate. Good luck, everybody. TH, six, eight. One and four the, are the speeds. Okay. You got this out. Thanks, Blue Smoke. Good luck, Blue Smoke. Here we are exactly. That's three, six, seven, eight. And everybody here, we're through. Who else? Richard, one and four. Uh, Boris, good luck, Boris, with a great comeback here, race nine. And we're in here. And good luck, everybody. I expect three to show some speed. I expect, and there goes one showing some speed. I didn't quite expect the seven to be showing this kind of speed. And six. Here's six. I thought eight would be showing a little more speed, but that's probably a good thing here by the eight tempering it instead of trying to run with these early. All right, and now seven is coming. Uh, still no sign of the six. Now seven starts to overhaul the one. Uh, the one is a gray horse, and six is still tracking a bit which is surprising to me. But one is not given up, folks. One fights back. What is that all about? And now six is starting to roll. And eight is still there. And now seven is going to make another attempt at the one. And this time it looks like he is successful in getting the lead. But I still don't see Jose Ortiz anywhere. I guess he's, he's he is a tight race, folks. Uh, seven is coming. Where is six? Uh, here comes eight. There's still no sign of six. Uh, are we going to get this? Three, two? Is that how we're going to lose this? Oh. So we get the three home at five to one. 
And I rod can't even get second. Oh, I thought that was him coming up the rail. All right. It was a fun day and uh, six had traffic. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. Great job, everybody who had three, two. What were the final odds on two? Who was taking some money there? And I know some of you had it. That's going to be a nice exact of five to one over seven to two. Me, I'm, I finished the day down. All right. It wasn't a, where I got torched or anything. I didn't get hurt, but I said it before. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I hit those races earlier and I just finished ahead for the day. You know, no. It, I tell it like it is, and tomorrow's another day, and um, had a blast. I think we had some good opportunities. I think my lone mistake was not three, who I liked as one of my big contenders, that the big dirt horse on the Tapita Sprint, but not even really that much of a mistake. You should have used a double. But with this 3-2 here, 62, so that's a um, – that's a 30 to 1 exact. They're very nice. And I know some of you had it here. Austin connects 238 box. Great job, Austin. Great job. There you go. Six had traffic. Uh, that's the thing. When Irod Ortiz, you know the funny thing about Irod Ortiz is, you know, you hear this he wins. It's like oh, Ortiz won the race. He's won three races in a row. And then when he loses, Oh, the horses are, are living beings. They can have an off day just like humans. So if Irod wins, he won the race. But if he loses, the horse was having an off day. But this time it sounds like you got stuck in traffic. But we do, do know that thing, you know, and if you watch racing at all, even the slightest bit, you know, when Irod wins, it's all Irod. When the horse, when the horse, when he loses, the horse had problems. It's fun day, you ended up 20 ahead and then a kick. Well, great job, Boris. You finished the day ahead. That is tremendous. And we move on to tomorrow, Gulfstream again. I just want to see who got this. Uh, who else had this uh, This race? I know some, some of you had that too. Nicholas. Great job, Nicholas. Great job. Win place 50 on the two. And you got a good price. What is it, 272? That's a nice hit. Great job, Nicholas. All right, who else? Excellent, excellent. Nicholas Thomas, he shoots, he scores. Um, as Austin, when he weighed in early, had the box there. Tremendous job, Austin. Uh, two, four, five. Uh, all right, I think we got everything covered. Richard, one, two, three, four. Tremendous job, Richard. And there he is, right there. Great job, Richard. Another outstanding job. Thanks for joining us and giving your selections, Richard. Richard, another heavy hitter on the show who usually gets an exactor out of his plays. Four went too wide, Mac Attack. Yeah, the one did show speed, Mac Attack. Very impressive the way he fought back. He destroyed the seven. Where is Saez? I don't know. I'm guessing he's in Saudi, uh, Mizzoud. Great job on that, Exacta. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, I want to again thank uh, Grandma Horse Racing uh, for the super chat today. Thank you very much, and thank you all, uh, everybody who have sent me super chats uh, so, uh, so far. And they're always appreciated. So have a great evening, Thursday evening. Uh, you got it. You got it, uh, Mizzoud. Have a great evening, everybody. Plan to be at Gulfstream tomorrow again and then Oakland on Friday. And just catch up on the chat before we go. Have a nice night all. Thanks, Gene. You too. Great job today. Uh, got it, uh, Mizzoud. Where is he? Have a nice night, all. Flat Ed. Hey, Flat Ed. All right, Rihanna. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. Flat Ed, good to see you. Good luck if you're playing later. Thanks for the heads up on that. 
Have a good night, everybody. If you're playing, if you're playing, best of luck and bring it home. Golf stream tomorrow. If you like the show and you want to see more like this, there's a thumbs up sign. Click the thumb, thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for joining the show, everybody. Have a good, great Thursday. Night. Golf stream tomorrow. Thanks again for watching and being on the show as well. Good night, everybody. All the best.